Hello, everybody. Welcome to Five Idiots. I'm Jimmy Fantastic. Um, I am a f human fighter called Daka with a cross, a hand crossbow. And uh, over to you, Eliod. Greetings, friends. I'm Eliod the Gnome, a level three rock gnome cleric. I've got a mace and a shield, some uh, divinity of light spells, that kind of thing. I'm. Uh... Dedalquist, or in-game Florgal Snarp, um, Goblin Sorcerer, weapons are for nerds. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, and I'm uh, Dimitriov, the X-Men, uh, X-Men Lumberjack, uh, X-Military Fighter, level 3. The, the X-Murderer, is that what you said? Uh, I have done some murdering with some axes before, yeah. Well, I can safely say that, yeah. Correct. <laughs> How we doing, gentlemen? Glorious. I use that term loosely. So is it Elliot the Gnome or Elliot the Nom? The Nom. <laughs> okay, because you said the Gnome, so I just want to clear that up. Oh, did I say the Gnome? Oh. Yes, you did. <laughs> my, my my mistake. How I did use the word gnome you? because I am a gnome. <laughs> I just want to clear that up for uh, for the sake of a uh, roleplay. Absolutely, my bad. <laughs> All right. So as, as as we remember from last session, um, we were at you were at the crossroads, uh, Tillich Manor. Being up the crossroads to the left here, uh, this is the uh, the north south road. From Prell back down to Victa, uh, you had taken camp overnight at a uh, at, at the campsite which is a relatively well used campsite it was already kind of set up as far as like the uh the fire ring so on and so forth and you were assaulted by a three uh, large very large uh kind of a red tinted uh uh boars hey now it was a mutual assault like we assaulted <laughs> them as well. yes, <laughs> yes. Yep. you guys did walk out into the dark and start firing i mean you know so um from those boars you were able to take if i remember correctly you took some blood samples being this being the fact that they were quite large you did take two tusks from each of them mm -hmm. so six total tusks these tusks are like they're pristine right they were like they don't look like if, if for anybody who's ever owned a, a pet of any kind, when you have an animal that, um, you know, just from normal everyday chewing, eating of food, they get like these, the, the yellowish, sometimes brownish rings around the base of the teeth. These tusks do not have those. They're literally pristine. They look as if they've been, you know, for lack of a better term, handled by a dentist, right? For the last, for the lifetime of this, of these boars. We know there is no boar dentistry though. Um, Oh, However, like I said, they just look very, very, very clean. They're beautiful pieces. <laughs> so you keep that in mind. Um, yeah. You were able to take a nice long rest. Uh, we kind of uh, we kind of retcon that a little bit because I wanted you to learn how to how to how to do resting in the system. Um, you have woken up from your uh, the knowledge passed to you by Kalon the Turd. Uh, from this point, heading dead west. It will take approximately a half day's walk for the four of you to reach the Tillich Manor and its surrounding areas. Mm. Well, I guess we should just get going then, eh? Onward. Onward and upwards, yep. chaps. Okay, perfect. So, um, making the walk, it's a very relatively easy walk, right? It's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's still, we're in the throes of spring right now. So a little early morning chill, followed by once the sun comes up and kind of gets rid of the low mists that are on the grass and, and the foliage around. Um, it's a quite a beautiful day. Uh, it takes you about, as you had mentioned, a half day. Um, you have to slow down every now and then for Ellie the Nom and, uh, and for Flargo Snarp just because of the shortness of their legs every now and then. Um, you know, you, you, you kind of set pace to the, to, the, to the shorter of the group. Um, but yeah, eventually you do reach the Tillich Manor area. I'm going to pull up the map for the surrounding area here. It should pull you in. Let me know if you can see that on the map. No. Okay, one quick second. Okay, now you should be able to see it. Yes. Yep, yeah. got it. Okay, so, um, so I wanted to introduce you guys. This is This is like a thousand foot level map here, right? Instead of creating a scene where this is out of character, by the way, 
instead of creating a scene where I give you guys, you know, 10 or 15 whatever to kind of try to roam through and pulling your tokens across and wasting 20 minutes dragging pieces across a table. This is one of our, our thousand level views. So in a view like this, it's kind of assumed that, you know, when, when you come onto the map that you can roughly see what's going on. And for the sake of brevity, for the sake of speed, we'll have some of these maps when there's an area for you to kind of be in and around, but not necessarily have to explore 100% of it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yep. Pretty good. So y'all walk in um, via this road, via this road here to the east, right? Walking westward. You come in, you you you, you break the tree line. Um, it does, there are sparse trees located on both sides of the road all the way in. Beautiful, large um, um, uh, trees, which would be perfect for lumbering, right? And as you make it into the break, as you make it into the, the Tillich Manor surrounding area, you immediately notice up on a hill to the right, kind of tucked in behind a set of trees, but you can see it. That would be what you probably assume is the manor. It's the largest of the buildings. It's on about a 10-foot hill, nothing crazy to climb or anything like that. Just kind of on a rise where somebody would build a larger home if they wanted to overlook their territory, right? To the right and to the left of you, both to the north and to the south of the road, you have several farmhouses, ranch houses, um, farmland that was obviously tilled at one time, um, obvious ranch pens that were actually maintained at one time, and then several homes themselves that were very well maintained at one time, though have fallen into several um, levels of disrepair. We're not gonna go as far as to call these ruins, um, they're still built, but in some areas, like roofs have caved in in like four or five foot sections. Maybe glass has been broken in a few of the windows. Um, doors are ajar. Um, when we talk about the pens for um, what must have been the animals at one time, five or six slats may be on the ground, and one of the pens may be at a 40, I'm sorry, one of the pillars, the posts may be at like a 45 degree angle. So it's not as if this is a ruinous area. It's just fallen into disrepair. Um, up at the manor site, from your view, you can see there is some activity going on up there. There's four or five uh, figures kind of moving around, you know, grabbing a box or two, maybe with a ladder over one shoulder, maybe with um, holding something, although at this view you can't see, but something large, two people carrying something, so on and so forth. No more than about four or five figures, however, right? Um, but this is your basic scene. Glancing off of the road as you walk in to these first sets of, um, of farm uh, farmland, we'll call it tilled area, to the north of you, it's, it's interesting, right? You know that, that looking at the farmhouses that this area hasn't been cared for in quite some time, at least to the level of a true city or town. But there's not a, there's no weeds. There's no weeds in these areas. They're not like tilled and ready to be farmed. But the dirt is quite beautiful. It's a it's a nice dark color, ready to be uh, ready to be. It's it's almost as if the areas would be ready to plant it, ready ready to be planted, if there were people taking care of this area that well. And that's how they all look. The ones that you can see. Some kind of magic afoot. Mm. Oh, uh, should we take a sample? Didn't he ask for yes. soil samples? Good idea to be to have. The problem okay, is... So which, um, um, just give me a quick ping here. Obviously, we'll say you're about right here. So give me yeah. a quick ping of where you'd like to go for a quick soil sample. Well, well, like, before before you go for the soil sample, uh, Dimitrov, uh, the, you know the 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 house the man has got owners now, right? Like if if the if the if the people are, are the brothers are they? If they see yep. you know us four people just running around stealing, like they might think we're stealing and stuff, and they might come and try and fight us. Like I think we should just go up to the front door and say, you know, introduce ourselves first, right? Do Do you think that? That sounds reasonable. Uh. I mean, <clears throat> it's quite it's far away unreasonable. from the house, isn't it? I mean, is it unreasonable to enter the houses and see what what's in there? Are, they... well, are you asking how the houses look, or are you asking this amongst your party members? I'm a, I'm asking the group. 
Well, I still think we don't have any explicit reason uh, to suspect these brothers have committed a crime or anything like this. I, I feel like a, a direct approach should be our first course of action. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think we should just, like, you know... I mean, we, okay. we could if they can't see. Like, you know, if there's enough trees, like, maybe you could. But I think we could just go to them and say, you know, Kalon deterred has asked us to come up and stuff and just kind of be straight with them. I mean, yeah, it's up to you guys. It's just because he specifically mentioned soil samples when he sent us out here. That was all. I mean, we, we, I mean, if you want to, I mean, you, 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 you're a bit sneaky, I guess, right? With your uh, your woodsman training, maybe you could, uh, maybe you could try and sneak and, and not be seen, maybe. Well, no, no, we'll, we'll go, we'll go, we'll, we'll go and talk to them. Go on, we'll go and talk to them first and see what they say. I guess if they deny us those samples. Then it's time to to go get them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can come back at night and take them at night, right? Okay. Yep. That's well, one. That could be a thing. I think. So, what's just... the consensus view then? Are you approaching the manor? Yes, yeah. I believe so. I think. Okay, should, easy yeah. enough. So, um, yeah, it's a very it's an easy walk, right? They see you coming. Whoever's working up there, kind of pointing at you, like, oh, you know, like somebody's coming up not you know not, not in a manner where like they're grabbing weapons and such they're just like if somebody was to be approaching a country home they would point out to somebody else oh there's you know there's visitors afoot um again nothing really changes about your view of the area as you're walking by in regards to the homes you know all of these homes are in various levels of disrepair as well again not knocked over not ruinous but you know um all of these farmlands are in the same um, significant, uh, I shouldn't say significant, but same levels of, of preparedness for, uh, for being planted, if you will. Hmm. So as you move up to the manor itself, right, the manor looks pretty darn good. Now, you know, these, these, these guys have only been here for a couple of months, couple, three months, right? Um, but the manor's in very, very well kept shape. Either they've been very busy and this has been their only focus um with the number of people you see or there were more people here at one time helping them is your is your you know are your thoughts on it but it's it's a nice house right it's big it's 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 good sized um probably three or four thousand total square feet of livable space at some point it is a two-story structure um there's three or four individuals outside kind of as as you mentioned you know as you kind of approach from uh, this spot here, there's three or four individuals, like I said, outside who are moving stuff around. There's a few carts out there. Um, they are bringing boxes in, moving uh, what appears to be refuse out, not um, not extensive levels of garbage, but, you know, um, old pieces of maybe broken furniture here and there, tarps, so on and so forth. It doesn't look like a construction site, but it does look like they're doing work on the home. Well, I guess we should uh, we should like you know say hello. <laughs> oh, all friendly, you know. Give are, you, are we just uh, gonna stumble up to the door then, or? Yeah, I guess so. Is that Faps? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's not yet. We're getting there. Sorry. So yeah. What's what what what's, what's the plan here? I've got this on to make sure the stream looks okay. I should. I should, no, no, that's I fine. Try not that's to fine. Look. We're good for right now. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So let's like hail them, right? And like, hello, friends. Um, <laughs> you know, like make sure they they're not threatened and stuff. And then I guess just go yeah, to the. So you know. They're not. They're not totally worried about you. They must have. So it, it gives you the inclination that there must have been some visitors here, not necessarily yesterday or the day before, but they're used to people coming, right? Because they're, they, didn't, they weren't worried, are you bandits? They weren't worried. Now, maybe it's the way you're dressed. Maybe it's the, um, the variance of your group, you know, two humans, a goblin, a nom. No. Um, maybe there's, there's just different, you know, you're, you're well kept, right? We've got a... Uh, a, a gnome in chainmail armor with his, his his items over him. We've got a an individual carrying a wood axe, where, where you know in his uh, leather armor, so on and so forth. So you're not you don't look like the average bandits who just roll out of the forest ready to take over a, a local area, right? But you, there's something there. They know they've they've had visitors here at some point. Mm. Yeah. So. Uh... So yeah, I guess we should just go up to them and like, you know, say, 
say hello. Um, we've been sent. Well, I mean, yeah, just say hello. Who, who are you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what business is a foot friends? Okay, so oh. you're approached by a by a, 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 a an individual. In uh, his name is Finches. Um, we'll just. I mean, you 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 kind of figure out who Faps and Finches are immediately, right? They're dressed a little bit better. Um, dressed in blue, does, blues and golds as the pictures is on your screen, right? Middle-aged guy, you know, if for this time frame, you know, in, into his 20s, uh, mid-20s, maybe maybe early 30s, a little bit uh, silvery, silverish uh, platinum type hair, though not necessarily from age. Um, and he seems a really jovial, you know, dude. He, he walks up, big smile on his face. Hey, how, how can I help you? What, what can I do for you, gentlemen? Welcome to, the, welcome to what we hope to be Tillich Manor again. Oh, um, hello. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, we've been sent by. Uh, I'm I'm Daka. I'm a uh, member of the Grey, and uh, these are my associates. And we've been tasked okay. with uh, investigating, you know, the local, the local manor. <laughs> investigating. Investigating. Yeah. There were disturbances here many years ago, and. Uh... We wondered if uh, you'd had any similar problems since you arrived. So he kind of rolls his eyes a little bit, right? Like he's heard this story before. Oh, okay, okay. So, so I'm Finches, and this is my brother Faps. And he entered, he, he points another guy out. We'll pull his picture up here in a second. <laughs> Don't laugh, Jim. Why did you call that him Faps? <laughs> Would you mind? I know who Doc is. Who are the three of you? Uh, I am Dimitriov. Uh, we, me and uh, Dako are, uh, are, are friends. So I'm uh, I'm a woodsman. I I, know, I was just looking at the uh, the lumber over there, and uh, I've I've got some contacts. If uh, you ever wanted to consider uh, getting into the logging industry, yeah, he um he kind of gives like that side nod, like never really thought about that. But yeah, that's <laughs> I mean you know. As far as like a, like one of these guys who's kind of contemplating what may be on the future. I am Elliot the Nom, a uh, a cleric. Uh, it's a very nice to meet you. We've been uh, tasked along with these fine fellows here, as uh, Daka says. And Florigal Snarp. <laughs> he kind of looks at, um, at at Florigal Snarp a little bit different. He just uh, not that he has never encountered a goblin, but he understands. He, he kind of understands, okay, well, maybe he's just a short, not stature, but short as far as with his choice of words. Um, understands why he might be a little bit short and kind of lets that go. He reaches out a, a, a hand to shake each of yours. I'm assuming you shake back. Um, his hands are relatively soft, right? This guy hasn't seen a lot of work in his life. You know, it, it, Dimitrov, immediately you know that, you know, this guy has never, never turned a shovel or if he has, it's been very short. Um, never, never wielded an axe in, you know, uh, from a from a woodsman's point of view. Um, or if he has, it's been, like I said, a very short time frame. Um, they're softly oiled, like from a from a softness standpoint. Um, he comes from money, right? You almost get the impression. I would say that it's almost like it, it's one of those things where it's either mom's or dad's money. Right, he's, it's an inheritance type of thing. It's not something that he or she is as as uh, has made on their own. Yeah, so I'll be, I'll be like, it's a it's a beautiful manor you've got here. Um, have, have you got any plans for the the land and the the, the local town? Yeah. So he so immediately, I mean that 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 sets him a little bit more at ease, right? Because right <clears throat> away you just went right into his wheelhouse of of, of his area, right? So he, he, not that he relaxes a little bit, but he just gets a little, like his shoulders slump down just a little bit more. Like he's not as, as formal, not as primp and proper. Absolutely. You know, this was at one time, I'm sure you know, but this was at one time one of the, one of the most uh, well farmed areas in and around Victa. And we would love to see that happen again. In fact, if, if one or more of you are interested, you know, we will eventually be offering these homes, you know, for lease. Just like my, uh, just like my aunt did before her disappearance. Uh, well, it's, it's funny you should say that because, um, uh, I mean, I myself, I, I don't know, 
for these guys, but have some sort of experience in uh, farming as well. And I, I mean, I, I, I could definitely help out if, if, if you would sort of allow me to get a couple of samples. I, I could probably point you in the direction of uh, some crops to grow and, you know, uh, try and get the most out of your yield. So right away, as you say that, he's, it's a great, you know, he's, he's very, he's, you see he's receptive. Faps walks up. Now, Faps is a little bit of a darker, uh, I don't want to call him brooding, right? We'll just say he looks a hell of a lot more serious than Finch's does. Finch's seems like that kind of guy that when you have a beer, he's going to tell you everything. And Faps is the kind of guy that's going to look at the beer and say, what is this going to cost me? <laughs> right? And he's a little bit darker. He's got darker hair. Um, chooses blues as well, as well as he's got some golds in there. This has got to be some type of a of a house colors of theirs. Um, the the we'll call them tentatively the workers around the home are all dressed in blues with some pipings of yellow. And Faps appears and comes up as well. He goes, "Who do you have here, Finches?" Finches then introduces the four of you, and Faps kind of uh, regards you all with a with with much more of a an inquisitive eye. He kind of looks at each of you a little more seriously, like he's taking you up and down, um, kind of wondering, you know, looking looking a little closer at, at Elliot's uh, uh, holy symbol. He looks at Daka's uh, uh, badge. He looks down at, um, at Flargo Snarp and kind of regards him a little bit, you know, n noticing things hanging off of his belt, kind of looking, looking around a little bit more. And then Finch just kind of takes over the conversation again. Don't worry him, he's just a bit too serious. Um, but yeah, we would definitely be, in, I mean, feel free to, you know, uh, as far as we're concerned, you know, the, the, the surrounding area is yours to explore. Whoever we're going to invite is going to want those same rights as well. Feel free to take soil samples. If you guys are farmers, you'll know what you're looking for. We have some experience in that. We're hoping that we'll get some individuals who have more experience in that and can help us with this. Um, maybe you guys are the right ones for that. Uh, but yeah, feel free. Feel free to take wood samples, soils, whatever you like. Thanks very Finishes. much. Finishes. You mentioned your aunt. Any news of her since the disappearance? You know, we we don't know. We've we we re we received word in Prell that uh, that that we had inherited this land, being the uh, being uh, next in line, um, and. Honestly, one of the only two who would come down, two of the only two who would come down this far out of Prell. There, everybody's already kind of made their mark up there. This is our mark, um, and we were very excited because our aunt was a very successful. Uh, we'll call her an entrepreneur. She did a, she did some great things here. And if you know any of the history of Victa, it's you know this was at one time the area that supplied most of the foodstuffs for it. Mm. Speaking of food stuff, any chance of a cup of tea before we uh, before we get going? <laughs> yeah, we're um, we're actually in the middle of doing something right now, but you gentlemen are all invited to dinner tonight if you like, and then you feel free to take up. Uh, we'll have some. Uh, you're obviously not going to head back tonight, and you're not going to want to sleep in any of those homes. There's there's uh, they're rather drafty right now with some of the holes in the walls, um, and you feel free. You may feel free to take up a few of our uh, guest bedrooms here at the home as well. We're not. We don't have all of the comforts of home yet. We just ask, obviously, that you, you know, keep the areas of the manor itself kind of allow us our own privacy. And we'll uh, we'll get to know each other a little bit later if you like. Well, thanks very much. That sounds amazing. Oh, that sounds yeah. very agreeable. Well, if we're, we've got a hand out, we've got to extend our hands first if we're expecting people to uh, to come out here and, and, and join us in this endeavor. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, so uh, what time's dinner? <laughs> he just tells you in a couple hours. It, it, feel free to come back a, about yeah. sunset when you start to see the sun go behind the uh, behind the trees there in, in, um, in the west, and uh, then we'll kind of sit down. And it's not going to be a great meal by any means as far as, uh, as well appointed, but, you know, we have some, we have some, uh, some food stuff set aside. Okay. Uh, well, I'm, if, I'm, I'm just going to take some look, a look at the lumber over there or... Uh... Thank you very much for the offer. Your hospitality is greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. They both of them kind of regard Flargo Snarp a little bit. Obviously, they heard all three of the other ones speak, with the exception of the names, and kind of not as if 
you know that look when somebody kind of feels you're being rude because you're the only person who hasn't asked them what their job is at a, at a you know, at a, at a get together, kind of one of those things where they just kind of look at him like, well, maybe he's just a really quiet guy, but they regard him a little bit. Not like a, there is no acquaintance of any kind. It's just, they're looking at him a little. He's the only one who didn't really speak up at all. Interesting. All right, let's get these samples then. Yep. Yeah, let's <clears> go and... Uh, I mean, I guess did, he, did he say, like, what we need or anything, or...? So, uh, from, your, from your recollection of the conversation, it was soil samples. It was just basically anything you could get your hands on that, from a scientific point of view, might either give you clues as to why it's so fertile or what may have happened. So, okay. you've got blood samples from the boar, you've got the tusks from the boar, um, you're, co you're considering uh, uh, dirt samples, soil samples, I should say, yep. um, currently. Can I check the uh, trees as well for um, any kind of like disturbance or anything? So define disturbance for me. Like, <clears throat> like, I don't know, any kind of creatures moving through, anything that, like, anything that a tracker, yeah, diseases in the trees, in the woods, or, like, any kind of, like, out of place animal tracks, or any kind of tracks or anything that are out of place, or... Okay, easy enough. With your um, background as a woodsman, I'll, I'll make, there'll, there'll be no role here, because there isn't, you're not, you're not looking for anything overly sp specific you wouldn't already look for in a tree or a, or a, or a woods, woodland area. Um, no, you don't see a lot out of place, right, as far as the trees are concerned, um, with a few minor exceptions. These trees are very healthy. These right. trees' trunks are very thick, right? Branches are thicker than you're used to for these tree types. I'm not going to get into tree types. I didn't, I didn't micromanage what kind of trees we have here. We'll just say of the tree breeds that you know, these trees seem very, very hardy and healthy. Um, there, there are some tints of red here and there in the tree bark. Not Ooh. dark, deep, hardcore reds, but if you were to look at... So similar to the boars, that they had, a, they had red tinges throughout their fur. The wood, the bark, even some of the leaves have some red tinting here and there through them. Okay. Wow. As far as small animals, as far as things like that, <laughs> Strangely, you don't see any. You do see birds. Um, there are birds flying over. Sorry, uh, Flargo Snarp, no seagulls. Um, but you don't see things like squirrels. You don't see things like uh, um, uh, raccoons, things that you might think or, or signs of. Um, no animal scat the, the, of the smaller nature around the base of the trees. Um, there are birds' nests here and there, but no animal nests further up, things like that. Mm. Would... Can I... Sorry. Well... Carry oh, on. All, all I was just going to say is, like, can I, like, set up, like, a couple of traps that, like, for, like, the main pathways that lead through the woods into the manors, like, just to see, like, for disturb... Like, because obviously if we're going for dinner, like, if anything moves around or anything, just so... I know that something's been there, do you know what I mean? Like, so like, uh, not a trap as in to actually capture something, but just to sort of put some leaves down or some mud. So like, if something moves past, then I know it's... So you could do something like that, but we're talking about a very large area. Ah, uh, okay. Right? So if you said to me, you know, ping a tree and just say, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of smooth around, smooth out the, the soil around that tree so that if anything were to go up and down that tree, I would kind yeah. of, it would kind of leave some prints. We can do something like that, but for you to like go around to all of the trees in the perimeter and set up something like that would take quite some time. Yeah. Okay. I'll just I'll just grab a sample of like one of the branches or something and okay. like a small sample. So um, we'll just say for notes purposes, you've seen three breeds of of, of wood. Uh, we'll call it um, good wood for either construction and or lumber tree types. Right. These aren't fruit trees. These are, uh, are wood for structure type trees. And you grab three small branches, maybe maybe a couple small branches from each of them from different trees and kind of tuck those away in your backpack. Go ahead and throw that on your notes in um, Slack. 
So would would uh, Eliod and Flagel Snarl would they be like to kind of detect magic, if you like, magical? I don't know residue or whatever in in, in an area or anything like that. Is that I don't know how magic works in Dungeons and Dragons settings or anything. Is well, that this... would be something to ask them, obviously. Well, I as mean... a magic user, I don't know either. <laughs> yeah. I like, don't have a spell for detect magic. No, I could he heal a tree. <laughs> but like you know, in terms of like in terms of like you know, kind of out of character kind of thing. In terms of in terms of the D and D world, is mm. that is that sort of a thing that they would have? Like, would they have that affinity for like magic, if you like? Okay, so um, Elliot carries. He's a rock gnome, so he carries more of an affinity for underground locations, if you will. Um, he does have some stuff on his character sheet that he. Um, um, that will allow him to do certain checks at certain time frames, yes. Um, a woodland setting would not be one of those. Um, if this were an out of character, because you're asking, right, if this would be some type of a, a temple area that we're around because of his background in religion, he could definitely do some type of a check to, to discern, you know, whom this may be a god or goddess of. Um, is it utilized lately? Things like that. Yeah. Um, but... As far as Florigal Snarp, um, again, it would be based on what he is looking for. You know, it, it's, it, it, there is, there's not really a check for, unless there are signs of is, has there been magic used lately around here? Right. Nice. There's not like a, there's not like a footprint, if you will. Right. Friends, what do we think is the source of this strange red marking that we found now on the boars, on the trees? Is the phenomenon of sorceress origin or natural origin? Does anybody have any idea what causes this kind of red marking? Is, is there water anywhere? Ooh, like, is idea. there like a water source? Because the animals will be drinking the water in the trees. There's um, probably a water source somewhere. It's not localized. Um, all right. This is not a situation of a farmland where we have um, a lot of aqueducts kind of coming in off of a river, which is a little bit unique as well. Um, that tells you either, A, there's a good level of, of, of rainfall during the growing season here, or they're getting their water from another source. Mm. Mm. Should we, should we that's check good, the... That's, that's, that is something that kind of peaks in your head. Yeah, mm. should, should we check the soil and see if the soil, like, if the soil's got a reddish tint, then... Uh... Mm. That could be possible, right. couldn't it? And let's get those samples at the same time, right? Yeah, yeah. let's get the samples, yeah. Alright, so give me a ping of where you're going to go. Uh, I don't know how to The closest ping. one to the map. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My legs are very small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of these two. Yeah, so just left click. So I'm assuming it's right over here. Okay. So, yeah, so you kind of... You, you, you dig around a little, right? You're not going to pull out spades and... And um, and and turn eight feet of soil, right? Hold on one sec. My wife's getting the dog in my office. You're not going to turn like eight feet of soil, right? Um, but a simple cursory look around. Yeah, the dirt carries almost that same soft tint. Again, it's not it's not anything bold or profound, but it is a um, it's a situation where there is a red tint to it. Does, um, does it, sorry, go. Go ahead. I was saying, does iron? I iron iron is red, right? Iron causes reddishness. Is that is that wrong? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, is, wait, is that wrong? Are you saying that's right or that's wrong? Or copper. <laughs> Co copper. So if you want to, so iron, copper, iron does. So Ellie, iron, you're you're not a dwarf, well. right? It's two different alone. ways to be. Ex I am a dwarf. But if you want to, you are. You have. You know, knowledge of underground. If you want to make oh. some kind of a, we'll call it ah, geology so you check. Got your character sheet. Do you have yep. access to the geology. sheet now that I've opened it for you? No, I can't see it. Oh yes, no. Okay, thank you. Okay, so feel free to um, open your sheet there. Yeah, rock dome, artificer's law. Mm, no, it's not quite. I'll not pull the other ones out just so you can pull up sheets if you want to do anything on your your sheet itself. Glorious. Okay, so if you look at your attributes there, you, you've got several checks that you can kind of do. Um, but I'm going to okay. ask you, like, what it is that you're looking for. So in this case, you had said, you know, mm. does, doesn't iron kind of give a red tint? Yeah. 
So if you yeah. told me I'm gonna, you know, what do I know? Of, you know, give me one of those checks, and then what you're kind of looking for. What would you be looking for as far as that's concerned? What I'm looking for is in amongst the reddish you any kind of uh, particulates, any kind of rocky or gritty particles that were I can I can match up against my you know vague knowledge of geology for my. Okay, my no, that's background. easy. So yeah, so do a perception check. So left click perception check. There's you've got three party members with you, so I'll let you do it at advantage because you're all Ooh. kind of looking around together. Oh, you're telling work. them what you're looking for. I was not very perspective. <laughs> okay. So that's okay. So um, remember, this is there's various degrees. So when you do a perception, when you do one of these checks, it's different from when Dimmy says to me, "I'm going to do a backflip," and I say, a, "You know, make an acrobatics check at this DC." Exactly. I can see Dimmy shaking. Versus, <laughs> what do I learn from this type of check? Um, a lower roll just gives you less information. Okay. Basically, they're just rocks. Well, there, yeah, so you don't notice, but no, you know what you're looking for. You're looking for, you know, something that's a little bit little bit thicker than the average piece of soil, right? Something mm. that may be shiny, something that may be ground into the soil, mixed into it, if you will, right? You yeah. don't really notice anything like that. You know, it's it's a sandy, mm. loamy with some good soil, and it's just, it, it seems very, very good. Dimi, you, you're there too. I'm sorry, Dimitriov, you're there too. It looks like it's ready to be, you could plow this field and plant it tomorrow. Mm. Can we see any carrots anywhere? Are there any carrots mm. being grown anywhere? Dak, we should no have crops asked the active. I was waiting for you to ask that. There's mm. no crops active at this time, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, you, looking around, there's no current active crops. But again, a distinct lack of weeds, right? There's no, even in the grasses, now that you kind of look around, the grasses around, this is like, like the grass is like, just it's grass right it's almost you know for lack of a better term again i'm doing out of out of character descriptions it looks like a very well-kept football pitch <laughs> right it, the grass is near perfect grass not from a level of being cut just from a lack of weeds a lack of 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 other items is the red you some kind of new weedy side <laughs> a new weedy side mm. is that the right word it kills weeds. An, herb, an herbicide. 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 Um, you don't get the scent of... So you've been around, you know, underground growing <laughs> locations. You don't get any scents on the air that usually happen with that, right? When something okay. is introduced, a chemical of some kind, there's usually a, a lingering smell. Okay. Either that chemi chemical was applied way back when and it's gone now, so it has dissipated, or they're not using anything at all. Fair. Hmm. Well, all I'm thinking is the boars or the the bison or whatever they the were. It, it was boars. <laughs> um, the bison. <laughs> well, if they've got the red tint, I'm assuming it's something that they've ingested. If the trees have got it, um, it must be from the ground or... I'm just thinking it's a water, like a water source, and if there's no clear water source here, like where where are they? Like what what is it that they're bringing in? Like and like mm. he said, there's no small animals, right? Not the normal animals, like the badgers no and all that. Yeah, Squirrels. no no hands, and uh, so it just it, it makes me wonder, like, <clears throat> is there like Anything to sort of look for around here that's, I don't know, that that could be like where these, like, I don't know. I'm trying to think, because where have these borgs come from? Like, are they just local to the area or yeah, you're, are they... You're trying to, you're trying, in your head, you're trying to connect A to D, right? Okay. Yeah, basically is what I'm trying to do, but yeah. Yeah, so... Again, you've noticed, so in, you go back to, you know, what do boars eat in your head? You go back to what do other animals eat? There's no crops here. Um, you don't see currently around here, you don't see any grass-fed animals, right? That would be the next question. All right. um, there's no cows, there's no sheep, um, rams, um, things like that. You don't see any of those here, but obviously it's still not an active location. There are several pens... 
and those pens are in you know they're not being in, they're not in use there are no animals in the pen so at some time there was there was some farming uh, obviously farming there was some ranching activity as well can we go and look at one of the pens absolutely yeah that's i i feel like we should go and have a look at one of the pens and just see <clears throat> like if we can figure out what was there before while okay, we so Go ahead, I'm sorry, Elliot. While we're traveling to the pens, I, or just as we're about to start off, I, I ask you this, what kind of sense did you get of the brothers? Did you suspect they were telling the truth? Uh, how did they come across? I was, I, I thought they seemed okay. Yeah, it seemed pretty, pretty genuine, eh? Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, like, I just got the sense that the, I, I got more of a sense of Finches than I did of Faps, but he just seems like a, a rich guy. Uh, born and bred rich guy, and then um, I guess we'll find out more about him at dinner. But yeah. spoiled mm. brat. Sorry, spoiled brats. Spoiled brats. Okay, fair. Yeah. Fair. I think. And it's then, easy. like, <clears throat> we need to know what their relate, like, how strong their relationship was with their aunt. Mm. I think it seems more thinking... like uh, it seems more like a problem with this land right than yes than, exactly than, than anything to do with the family i think y it's, yeah it's this particular area it's, whether it's magic i think it's probably magic right like a, there's no there's no bore dentists is there <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. But if, if she yeah, went bore dentists that's correct if, she, if wow. she went if she went missing so long ago why has it taken them so long to move here News travel slowly i guess maybe they had other business to attend to in wherever they were were before yeah, and and, I... and Kalon did did speak to that, right? If you remember, Kalon had said that they've got to they've got to wait a little while to make sure that the individual in question is, in their belief, not coming back, and then you alert the next of kin, as best you can. That hey, this is we we don't know where this individual is because there are situations where people just up and leave, right? I mean, in all honesty, and there are situations where people are killed in battle, and you have to do at least something with their um th this isn't a situation where uh, or a world where you know items are just raided when somebody loses their life right you try <laughs> to get them off to the to the right individuals on, on the way here i was somewhat suspicious of the brothers before we met them but now with all these funny goings on i'm starting to fear for them and for the other people who are here like you say daka this land seems troubled Hmm, do you reckon we should? Um, <clears throat> do you reckon we should try and uh, talk them into letting us stay the night? Oh, he said we could stay the night anyway, didn't he? So would, yeah. would be would be quite interesting, I think, to stick around for the night. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can we uh, can we have a look at this pen just quickly? Mm. I just want to. Yep. Yeah. Now, yeah. now no, I want to just take, take a quick reminder. I'm assuming none of you declared it, but I'm assuming because you said you wanted to, you did. You did not get any soil samples yet. You had dug through the earth. Oh yeah. I'm yeah, assuming we... you want to take some soil samples. Yeah, yes. sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I figured, but I just I wanted to point that out. So go ahead and note that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, moving over to the pen again. So uh, the dirt itself is a little bit more tamped down here. There were obviously animals in these pens at one time. Um, uh, no scat or remains only because it's probably been a long time probably several seasons of rains have have kind of washed those into the dirts themselves um but it is a little bit more firm it's not well tilled the dirt again has a slight red tinge to it not as bold as the farming areas right but then you kind of notice that as you start to look for this red tinge even in the pathways right even in the pathways the dirt itself has a slight, slight red hue to it, like a shading more than anything. It's not bright. It's nothing like that. But everything has kind of a shade to it. Everything's in the in the red hue of shades is about the best way to put it. Even some of the blades of grass kind of look like in the green shade that are more red green than yellow green. Wow. Mm hmm. I'm. I'm have to admit, I'm starting to become wary about this meal tonight i'm not too sure what i want to consume that's been sourced from around this area like, especially if they offer me water i think dimitrov might be onto something i'm not sure i'd like to drink it mm. oh that's great elliot i love it i'm, I'm serious <laughs> no, i ain't touching that shit. that's great 
But I mean, the, 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 this this supplied like Victor for a long time, didn't it? This area, like this. this... Yes, they did. And 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 again, talking, remembering your conversation with um with Kalon, you know, it undoubtedly, if there was something bad coming out of this area within a couple three weeks, people would have started to show signs of something. Yeah. And Ori Lensis, didn't the country wizard? He was a big fan of the carrots. He ate all he the carrots. He was a huge fan of the carrots, and he in fact asked you to bring some back for him. Mm, so, the, so it seems like it's okay to eat the food grown here, but well, nothing's been grown here, has it? Like they're not growing anything. Well, not Does recently. Does carotene but turn in things the past. red? Does what, sir? Does carotene turn things red? The, the stuffing <laughs> that carrots. I don't know. That's a good question. I know it's Not good for eyesight. This extent. Okay. I guess it doesn't make boars turn massive and like. <laughs> it doesn't make boars turn giant and get get them a dentist. <laughs> it's very true. I'm so, trying to find some kind of uh, natural I explanation it, I for this problem. Check inside the houses. There might be information in there. Mm. Okay, so um. Are you going to stay in just this general area, guys? Is this, and if so, um, Florigo Snarp, just ping a house that you want to kind of go into. No oh, well. All right. So entering the home, right? It's there. I would, they're, while they're not, you know, the most beautiful of locations, they're very utilitarian, right? You can tell these were farming homes or ranching homes. Um, large interior spaces with smaller bedrooms off of them what must have been bedrooms. In some areas, the beds are still there in various levels of disrepair, right? In some, uh, a leg may be broken. Um, fireplaces that were used at one time to keep the, uh, the, the homes warm, not huge. They're all one story. None of these are two story locations. Um, a couple of them even have uh, barns behind them um, for what must have been either, you know, bringing in crops and or feeding crops and or preparing crops for, for movement or storing of animals, um, wood floors, you know, so well-built, uh, but utilitarian, very utilitarian. Mm. I want to tap around, see if I can find something. Mm. So define tap around. Defi what are you looking for? I want to lift stuff. Follow floors. So you're just going to kind of look, okay. No, that's fine. So you're going to look around. I'm going to so, tap on the floor to sit here if, like, there's a cellar underneath and stuff like that. Okay, perfect. So um, do um, open your character sheet. You have a perception check on your left-hand side there about two-thirds of the way down. Left-click it and give it to me at um, with advantage because the four of you are kind of assumed to be doing this. You're kind of looking around. Um, what does that mean? So when you left-click perception, it'll say normal roller. There you go. Okay, so 14. So you don't find your tap and floors, your tap and walls. You're kind of moving furniture a little bit here and there. Um, the the odd rug that's in disrepair is gnarled on one end. Check, you checking lift and, the, the fireplaces. Yeah, checking the fireplaces. The kind of, <laughs> you, 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 grab a, you grab a stick and kind of move around the ash a little bit. You don't find a lot in this home, right? Um, you'll find a, an occasional, uh, maybe a, a daughter's doll at one time or a son's doll at one time, maybe uh, uh, some chalk, um, a crowbar, a shovel that may have been broken in half. Very mundane items that you would think you would find on a, on a again, very utilitarian. Nothing that really stands out. Um, you know, again, some of these items, it's, it's not like they're decrepit and, 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 and have fallen into disrepair that they're rotting. Because as you know, even if you've ever opened up grandpa's, you know, out of character, grandpa's garage, even his old shovel still could be used today, right? Can I take the shovel? It's rather large for you. It's made, it's, it's made for either human sizes or larger. You may definitely take the shovel if you want. D Dimitrov, uh, can you take the shovel? I can take the shovel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I'm just thinking in case we need to dig things up. I was, you know, no, no, that's, who, that's who knows. So, um, Dimitri, you're you're now carrying a shovel just for purposes. Um, if it, you, you will only be able to do things with one hand at this point, this isn't something that you're going to strap to your backpack by any means. You're carrying a shovel, so just for knowledge. Ah. Oh. Hmm. 
It's interesting, isn't it? It can't be something affecting the people because the people that disappeared, it was like kind of violent attacks, wasn't it? I think. I think that's been kind well, they of weren't violent attacks. Remember, they were disappearances. Disappearances, it was very yeah. strange. Now, there were some attacks by animals out on the Ooh. North Road, kind of like you guys were attacked. Yeah. But there were no, you know, when the people or individuals were disappearing, it wasn't, there weren't a lot of clues left behind. Yeah, but that's mean, it, it, so it wasn't, it wasn't sickness, right? It wasn't, it wasn't like sickness. So they, they, they didn't eat these, they, you know, they didn't eat some, they didn't eat this dinner and then get sick because of the red stuff. <laughs> Outside of just the normal life trends of sickness, you got no indication from Kalon that anything... Again, they were very, you know, it was a, they supplied Victor with a majority of their foodstuffs. Mm -hmm. And now thinking about that, you know, this isn't exactly a huge farmland area. And now Victor was smaller back then. But you would have, you'd expect that, you know, a large, uh, uh, even a small sized um, uh, place where folks kind of, uh, what is it, a village, thank you. A small sized village, they would need more land than this. They were undoubtedly getting food from elsewhere as well, maybe even from their own farms. But this is, for how much you heard about their foodstuffs and all of that, and their animals and the meat and all of that stuff, this seems a little bit small. So we can take it that this is places extremely fertile, or there was food. Drama in your, not being a farmer, but in your mm. just, it's fertile, it's ready to okay. go. Okay. You could, like I said, you could literally um, till and, and plant these farms tomorrow. Unusually fertile. Yes. Mm. I. If if you were a farmer, this is the first place you would think you'd. I mean, I'm. I gotta go there. <laughs> when did these brothers come back? If I remember correctly, it was about three to six months ago when, when we were in the last session. I'd have to check my notes out of character. And if Finch... they've only been here several months, they haven't been here for several years by any means. And Finches hasn't done a day's work in his life, like on a farming side of things. When we walked up to the mansion, mm -hmm. like how many sort of people were there, like servants and stuff? Like, have we seen any farming people here? No, there have been no. That to your un unless they're doing something else. Now again, you've you've seen no crops planted. So someone, um... something or someone is looking after the land, or like his. <clears throat> well, it's a lot remember, of work. The, the fields aren't plowed. Oh, there's no weeds. Yeah, there's no weeds, definitely. But the field, like I said, they're not rowed. They're not ready to be planted, but they could be relatively easily. There's got to be some kind of magic, hasn't it? That's got to be some kind of magic. It seems that way. There they, doesn't they, seem to be any other explanation. They can't have. They can't <clears throat> have industrial strength herbicides. <laughs> <laughs> in, in Dungeons and Dragons. That's right. no, that, that's the, and you think about well. that, right? You think you think about so Elliot, you hearken back to some of the gnome growers of of some of the best mushrooms you've ever had underground. And, <laughs> and even those how how con, how constrained the soils had to be to keep out all of the contaminants, right? Oh yeah, it was very There uh... weren't these there weren't these giant areas of farm. Mm, yeah. They were very well constrained. Yeah or restrained, whatever the term would be. A very Again, finely tuned so, task. So DACA bringing up herbicides and stuff, right? You're In your head, you're going, man, could you imagine just to keep the grassland clear of weeds, mm. what you would need, let alone oh. the soil? Mm. Ah. Perhaps <laughs> then this is some kind of spell gone wrong. The previous owners, in their desire to uh, increase their yield of crop, cast some kind of a spell to make the lands magically more fertile and created super killer bores. Yes. <laughs> super what? <laughs> <laughs> super killer bores, yeah, obviously. <laughs> super killer bores? That's, that, seems okay, the so, obvious, um... uh, that seems the obvious answer. You'd think, though, if, if the, bo like, the, the bores weren't responsible for the disappearances, right? Because they'd, they'd be like... People torn to shreds and everything, true, wouldn't true. they? So, did did they kill people who found out the truth? And now, as it's no, I don't know. Well, so Very you remember strange. back to what Kalon told you, right? Which was slowly over time, as the disappearances increases, families started to leave the Tillic area because they had believed that whether it's curse and remember he wasn't alive then, so he doesn't have firsthand mm. knowledge. Whether it was curse, whether it was the loss of a family member, whether it was a desire to just get the hell out of Dodge. It wasn't a situation of where, you know, anybody was, was it, it happened over time. Mm -hmm. 
super interesting. Speaking of curious. Speaking, speaking of Kalon, that's super interesting. <laughs> it's very curious, isn't it? Do we inspect more houses? If you want to, absolutely. Yeah. How how many houses can we inspect before tea? I figure you could probably and, and you're gonna take your time looking through them, right? You're not just gonna open a door and then shut the door behind you, right? You're gonna kinda look around, kinda see, you know, oh, who may have lived here. I figure you could probably clear You know, those three sets of homes before it starts to get dark. Is there anything that we want to spend our time doing other than the houses? Is there anything else that we should be doing now? Do we think? I don't know. We've got no. soil. We've got soil samples. We've got some wood samples. Maybe grass samples. <laughs> you could. There's nothing wrong with that. Let's take some grass samples. Yeah. So um, you 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 reach down with your spade, your shovel, right, and you dig, like maybe three inches deep. That way, you you retain the earth, you retain the grass blades, and you retain the root structure. And kind of place that also into one of the. We'll just call it a, one of the containers that was given to you. So, yeah, I don't really know what we're looking for, but yeah, I guess. Okay, so are you doing this as a team, or are you guys going to separate? Because if you do this ah. as a team, I'll give you guys advantage on the rolls as each of you looks through. All Again, right, like I said, let's do it as, do it as if a you team. Do it as a team, you'll be able to clear those four, er those mm. three areas anyway. I think I should roll. I think I've got the most perception. Dacker so. takes charge of the uh, investigative efforts. Mm. <laughs> okay, so, um, oh, uh, do you, yep, there you go. Thank you. Oh, oh big no, okay, beautiful. So in this set of homes, right, Dacker, right, he's, his, his, uh, his investigatory mind just takes over, right? Because now he's <laughs> like, okay, I've got a whole bunch of clues around this area. I've seen some soil samples. I've talked to finches and faps. I've talked to, um, I've, I've, <laughs> <laughs> Jim, you're killing me. I've talked to you know, listening to Elliot the Nam, listening to 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 um, Demetrio talk about his, you know, what he's done with the trees. So you're starting to put more things together here. So this home, these homes look like they were left relatively rapidly, right? While a lot of the personal property of whoever may have lived here is gone, other items are left behind. You find mundane journals, right? Simple stuff. Um, uh, 13th of this month, we'll be planting the X crop um, at, you know, da, 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 you know f things that a farmer might keep. You find a, um, a child's uh, a journal that kind of recounts how boring it is living on the farm here. But boy, do mom and dad sure love it, right? And I'm going to go see um, Thomas down the street later, and I'm really excited to see him again. Um <laughs> You find again. You find um, toys broken and 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 in good shape, you know, as far as can be expected, made out of wood, carved horses, things like that. Um, you find some clothing on occasion, and not in great um, condition by any means, covered in dust and dirt in some cases, broken windows, fireplaces. You do deduce that there were individuals who have used this fireplace um, since. The departure of the occupants because there are several in, in some of the fireplaces and around some of the fireplaces in this home there's we'll say two of them there's broken furniture as if somebody busted up the furniture kind of threw it in the fire lighted lit a fire and may have spent the night here um, can we check the final entries of the journals are they particularly interesting no, just wow. just um, as if the journals ended again very mundane stuff Okay, nothing, there's no, this is my last entry, goodbye, kind of no, thing. No, nothing like that. If you want to take time investigating these journals, mm. it will take time from searching the sure. other homes. We could pocket them, couldn't we? We could pocket them for mm. later. Yeah. So um, go ahead and add your thing. Add, just add three mundane journals. For who, right who's, now. who's taking them? Dakar. Yeah, I'll take them. Just journals, aren't they? Yeah, just journals for right now. Is there anything anybody else is looking for specifically in this home? So do we think the broken... Daka did roll a 20 here, which is a natural 20, so... Mm. Is there any redness inside? Is there any dirt on the floor? Anything like that? So yeah, so dirt that would have blown in as a result of broken windows. Dirt that would have blown in 
as a result of um, doors being left ajar, things like that, right? Heavy, mm. uh, there's a couple of light footprints here and there. Again, whoever may have burned that furniture wasn't here yesterday. Yeah, do we think do we think the furniture burners are people passing by who've taken refuge in the house, or were they the original owners who did that for some reason? Any ideas? I'm sorry, say that again. I was just like I was, I was saying, like who who burnt the furniture? I was kind of talking to the group. You know, who who burnt the furniture? Do we think? Uh, you know, is that is that you know people passing by who've stopped for the night or something just for shelter? They 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 broke it up. Or was it the original owners who did that for some reason? Could have does, been does it look as though it's been broken in a fight, or just broken up? Oh, put on the fire, you said, right? Yeah, put on the fire. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I assume there's a lot of cro cr crosswebs, a lot of a lot of cobwebs hmm. around these areas. Are there yeah, any? There, there are there are cobwebs up in corners. There's cobwebs, um, you know, corners of of the legs of beds to the floor, things like that. Are there yes. any like giant man-eating spiders with a reddish tinge? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, okay. You do find some insects, you find some flies flying around, gnats, yes. No, the insect, the insect life looks to be normal, as you can tell. Well, thank fuck for that. <laughs> we don't need any Australian spiders, that's for sure. <laughs> you don't need the Australian nice. So the tree, the, the, were the trees, were the trees reddish tinged? We said right. Yes, the, tree, the bark the was reddish tinged. The um, the leaves had a, like I said, they're more on the red side than the yellow side of the of the green spectrum. So the trees, the the soil, all, all the all the plant life, the boars, but not the insects and not the humans. Why they the boars and not the? Say again. I just Why? answering a question that Dado sent me. Ah, okay. Uh, why, why the boars and not the humans? Why, why that distinction? What is, what is causing the boars to become mutated and not the humans? Mm. Well, they could just, yeah, they're not magical, are they? They're not magical because they're they are eating. So they are like they are like just a normal animal, but just somehow changed. We should have fed fed the boar meat to someone. Oh, mm. we did, we did, we ate, we ate the boar meat. Right? Yes, you did. You had, we, you had a little barbecue. Yes, we did. Yeah, we ate it. Oh it god, we might be fucked now. Do, do, do we? Do we have a reddish tinge? <laughs> no, you do not. You have not developed a reddish tinge as of yet. Oh, oh are we like twice as big and <laughs> you did you not get jacked out on steroids? Um, it was actually very tasty, tasty meat. Remember, we talked about you guys getting some bacon and. And frying that. <laughs> what are you laughing about there, Jim? Just... Jim's like, can I go back and eat it 16 more times? <laughs> I like how we're just like, oh, yeah, it's tinted magical. And yeah, we just ate all that meat. We didn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty tasty. Yeah, brilliant. Mm. Yeah, it was extremely know. tasty, yes. The problem, the problem with like this role playing thing is being an idiot in real life. <laughs> right, exactly. I feel like we should like what co we, we should know about what kind of magic causes reddish tints, but I've not got a clue. <laughs> I don't know what you to know, look I mean, for. I'm a there, moron. There's, there's, been, there's been nothing to give you, or other than the reddish tints, right? It's like, so what do you? You don't feel magic, but magic doesn't really leave a, a, a mm. you know, it doesn't leave a footprint, if you will. Mm. You know, not not any magic that you'd think of. I mean, obviously, if somebody cast a fireball spell, you'd have, you know, singes everywhere and such, but... Mm. Well, I guess we move on to the next set of houses then? Or... Yeah, I guess, I guess we'll have to. Yeah. I'll do a forward roll. <laughs> Just randomly. <laughs> <laughs> So are you all moving on to the next houses then? Yep. There we okay, go, 22. This, so you've got to, remember, you got to do it at advantage there. <laughs> oh, I didn't even need advantage, look, straight 22. Yeah, that's true, that's true. No, no, you're fine. I'll, you know, we'll just assume. So again, same thing, right? Very mundane homes. Um, some small tools you'll see, you know, you in, in, in the barn areas, you find some sides. There are... Um, uh, you know, horse horse pens in one of the barn, uh, clearly for draft horses. Um, you know, sorry, things that like was, that. So that, again, that was my forward nothing roll, traumatic. Sorry. You do find some in one of the what you assume to be a children's room. You find some hay, some some artwork, 
you know, from a child that may have been hidden in a drawer, things like that, you know, scrawled across Ooh. some parchment. A child hidden in a drawer. <laughs> Not a child in a drawer. <laughs> a child's artwork in the drawer. <laughs> Something very curious going on here. Oh my god, that reminds me of Brass Eye. <laughs> it reminds you of what? Brass Eye. Oh, I, I can't explain it now, but it was it was great. Anyway, whew, that's really funny. Okay, so man, this is we're too we're too we're too dumb. <laughs> so we, we we can't really find much, are we? We're finding things. We're just finding like stuff that's been abandoned by the people who left, right? So far, yes. We're not finding amazing clues. Now, way. if you did an extensive search, now remember, you're searching. You know, we're not. You're not. You're not turning over. You're. You're not turning over an entire home looking for signs of a murder, right? Like if, if you were in during your investigative periods, if you had to go into a home where you were trying to figure out what the hell happened to somebody, um, you would, you know, tear that home from top to bottom apart, right? You. You don't necessarily have that time to do that here. Is there any spells that uh, Eliot or Flagel could could cast that could, like, you know, maybe do some kind of crazy divination well, of some kind? Now that you, now that you can... mentioned it, Flargal's not with you anymore. Oh, what? Ah. What are Ooh. you doing, you sneaky goblin? <laughs> you sneaky goblin bastard. <laughs> And I I can locate objects, but I it has to be a specific object that I already know of and have seen, I believe. So... Hmm. It's not particularly useful. Hmm. Why is why is Flargal abandoned us? Shall we go back and get Flargal guys? Yeah, let's go. Okay. Let's, let's do that. I've got a feeling he might be here. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is there some is there some clue that uh, that tells you that he might be located there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know how. Okay, so um, you head back to the last homes you were searching, right? The last time you remember him being around you guys, you were located in these sets of homes. Um, you you go back to one of the kids' bedrooms and you find in the closet that there is a very small trap door opened. No. And it's dark down below. Wow. Oh. Okay. Who, uh, who who goes first? I'll go first. Give me go, D Dimitriov. Hang on, how how small is this hole or trapdoor? Oh yeah, About, uh, there you go. So this you so this is not a storage cellar, right? You would typically have a larger, even utilizing a short ladder. First of all, you can't see to the bottom. Ah, hang on, hang on. Because Flagglestar was knocking on all the stuff, wasn't he? He was trying to. Ooh. He was, Dimitrov is right, he was looking for yeah. a seller. He knows, doesn't he? He knows something. Yeah. He knows something. Aurelensis sent him there. He knows something and he wasn't telling yes. us. Yes. Yeah. The question is, is he with us or against us? Is he an antagonistic mm. in his approach or cooperative? I think what we should do is when we way. find him, we should slap the shit out of <laughs> him. <laughs> oh, no, that's a joke. That's a joke. <laughs> okay, so going back to Dimmy's Dimmy's um, question about the ladder itself. I knew you were gonna end the sentence that way. As soon as I as, when we find him, I I was like, yeah, he's gonna fucking slap me. <laughs> so, so um, so again, first of all, it's it's interesting that you found this in in the closet of a child's bedroom, right? That's that's mm. your first in, in, inclination that. This isn't a storage location, though that mm. would not necessarily preclude it. Um, a couple of other clues. It's smallish, right? It's about the size of a, of, of a man wide, two feet by two feet. So nothing that is, is you're going to be able to move, you know, larger size crates down, larger size bags down. You can move smaller items down without a doubt. Um, but it doesn't seem to be like a storage for the home, if you will. Is the light a secret closet in a bedroom? Maybe, but again, glancing down the hole, you can't see the bottom. You can't see it; just disappears into darkness. 
the wood of the ladder looks very, very um, uh, firm. It's, it looks like it will hold weight. It does not. It doesn't. It doesn't look as if it's been utilized a lot lately. I don't want to give you the impression that it's been used up and down constantly, but it's not in disrepair, right? It's like it's like this house. Um, it's got a layer of of, of currently it's got a layer of uh, dust on several of the rungs, and in fact, some of that's been brushed off a little bit. Um, but again, it's in good shape. <laughs> Should we light a torch and just drop it and then see if it lands on see if it lands on Flagel's staff on the floor? <laughs> do, we, do we want to alert him of our presence or do we want to surprise him? <laughs> what with like a birthday cake? <laughs> no, I mean, are, are, we, are, we, are we willing to let him know yes, that we're please. here or? Or, 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 or do we want to try and take him by surprise? Do you want to try and sneak up on him? <laughs> I mean, are we trying to take him? I don't know. I don't know. What... Well, I... I, I, I don't <laughs> take me. <laughs> I'm not ready to be broken in yet. I think, yeah, I'm I think still, we just, we just, just need to confront him. him. Should we, we shout him? him? Should we just yeah, shout can, can, him? Can I cast a spell? Can we just shout him? If, you, if you'd like to, Elliot, yes. Can I cast Thaumaturgy? And cause my voice to boom up to three times as loud as normal for one minute. So basically, you're going to sound like Jimmy laughing at a Blood Bowl three game. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Flogel <Fuggle> snob. <laughs> I cry. All right. So, um, so Flargal, I'll just kind of bring you back in a little bit. Um, you hear a booming yet, I don't want to call it a high pitched voice, right? <laughs> <laughs> I like how you peaked your microphone there, Elliot. <laughs> so you hear, you hear Elliot. You you know his voice. You hear him kind of belt, and it's loud. It's not like booming loud, not like your spell, booming loud, right? But it's loud, and he's kind of. I mean, you just hear oh, goes or however it, he pronounces is it. Is it echoing around the? Uh... It, it's echoing a little bit. Right? Yeah, I mean, you you know, you, you find yourself in, it's it's not necessarily rocky, but it's not full dirt. Um, it is um, supported on all sides by wood structure, not 100%, but you've got several, you know, pieces of wood kind of going around. Um, and then those are supported by beams going um, up and down, if you will, almost like to ensure that this thing doesn't cave in from side to side. All right. I'm down here. <laughs> may, may we come down? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so Flargo, you're only about halfway down right now. Yeah, alright. Yeah, I keep going down. Okay, so you 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 uh you 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 move all the way down this ladder. So Flargo's so um Elliot, you have night vision, if mm. you will, dark vision. Um, it is somewhat spoiled by the days, by the by the sunlight, you know, that's still coming in through some of these windows. So you can't usually, you can't see quite as far. Your eyes are kind of flickering back and forth. Um, you can't see him. It is a very deep, deep ladder, though. It's it's quite a distance, it, it, and I don't mean like you know, it's not three hundred feet, but it's you know, his voice is far away, but it's not, you know, he's not in the bottom of a. a he would seem about 50, 60, maybe 70 feet away from you. That is a deep-ass ladder. I, I begin to descend. <laughs> okay, so Elliot starts going first. Yeah, then I'll descend. I'll descend. Behind okay, Elliot. Dmitriev. Okay, so Dmitriev, are you still holding your shovel? Or are you leaving it up top? I'll, I'll put the shovel down on the floor. Okay, I figured as much, but I want to make and sure. Then, yeah, and then I'll, uh, I'll just start clumbering down the ladder. <laughs> Daka, anything you're doing? Um, no, I, I will, I will follow, I will follow, uh, I will follow Dmitriev. Okay, so um, Flargo Snarp, I'm assuming you're going to wait for him at the bottom, or what are you? I wrote to you. I'm sorry, say again. I wrote to you again. Okay. Give me one second. Sorry, gentlemen. This is when we split the party. It's just a little bit like this. How are you feeling, Dmitriev? I whisper 
uh, loudly because we head down the ladder. <laughs> Whisper loudly. <laughs> <laughs> my back is killing me, and my left shin is scratched from earlier, but I'm all right. How, how are you? How are you? No, not not bad. <laughs> it's exciting, this isn't it? It is. I often find it oh, exciting to descend ladders. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's a very a, long ladder. It is a long ladder. It's a 60 foot ladder though. Yeah, Elliot takes quite some time and you let him go first, so. I, I, I might start reading one of these journals. <laughs> have, you well, got any, you... have you got any light or anything that you can fire down there? Oh, All right, so uh... you, um, you get, everybody gets to the bottom. Daka and Dimitriov have the toughest time because they can't see shit after about 20 feet down the ladder, right? They can look up and they can see the light coming from the, we'll call it the, the hole of the, of the hatch or the, uh, the um, trap door. Um, mm. But as they move down, I mean, it's pitch black. You know, they, they, it, almost to the point where they also can't even see the rungs in front of them. Now, muscle memory has shown them that they are X, X distance apart. They have no problems descending. You have no worries. You're taking your time and slowly moving your feet down, wondering when you're going to hit solid ground. And finally, you do. Mm. Give me one second, we'll switch over to a new map here. Ooh. Get a light. Okay. Well, we, we need a torch. I think that's the... Uh... First thing. I've got a torch. Should I put my torch on? Or you could just trust us. No. I think we need a torch. <laughs> I advise torch. <laughs> <laughs> or you could just trust us. Can I? Should, should I use the ability for torch then? Or is it going to mess uh, no, it up? No, I'll, I'll I'll click it for you here. Okay. Well, uh, we'll give it to Elliot. That's the thing. I think El Elliot should be our torch bearer, right? Because. Uh, because I need a hand free to reload my crossbow and a hand to shoot my crossbow, and Dimitriov needs two hands to wield his axe, whereas Eliod can use a torch in one hand and his shield in the other, right, and still cast spells. Sounds okay, good. so he, so Eliod, in order to cast spells, will need at least one hand free. Oh, well, he could yeah. have a, he could have a torch and a cast a spell and just put away his shield. Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm shield, just, just know. letting, just letting Eliod know that you know if he. If he's Fine. carrying his shield, he'll need to drop it, not put it away, but drop it in order to cast that spell that same round, or take the time to put it away if he wants to even have his shield out. It's totally up to Elliot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I'll take the torch from Dagger. Can I can I cast Thaumaturgy again, causing the torch flames to brighten, just for you know, effect? So read, read the description of Thaumaturgy again. Uh, you create one of the following magical effects within range. You cause flames to flicker, brighten, dim, or change color for one minute. You can if you want. I mean, it's, I mean, I'm not asking for it to have an effect in game. I just want to talk. To okay, the torch yeah, you, you can definitely do that. So, what yeah. what color do you change the torch to? Oh, I, it, it, oh, wait, it brightens and turns blue for a minute. Okay, cyan. So every, every... <laughs> cyan. 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 Yeah, there you go. Cyan. Cyan. <laughs> so the, the torch brightens up and changes blue. Yeah, um, as, a, as a soft shade it of blue, me. right? Yeah, so yeah. you're still getting good vision out of it. Yeah. But um, it's it's obvious that Elliot the Nam has, has done something here. <laughs> right, let's go. Dadle, so you're, um, you're out in front. Is your, is your vision good on the map? Mm, yeah. Okay, perfect. I just want to make sure that I set your vision up correctly here. Yeah, I see something. Okay, since you're out in front of the party, we're going to let you take first action here. All right. Um, well, just say I what it is that you want to do, if anything. Ask I don't questions. want to um, alert what I see uh, of our presence, so I head back to the others. Uh, okay. And I tell them that I, I whisper that I saw some like giant rats. Oh, um, fuck's and they were here. They're... <laughs> rats? <laughs> what did you say, Jim? Or I'm sorry, Jim? <laughs> Jim is here. <laughs> red uh, as well. Of course they're uh, red. Oh, fucking rats. Why did it have to be rats? <laughs> Uh, I could see two of them, um, but uh, 
and they're like it the the there's a fork in the road ahead like um not far at all like i just barely came down here and i saw the rats and i stayed and waited for you guys um, what, what what are you doing down here Dado? what are you doing down here well we <laughs> came to find you Flago. <laughs> yeah i mean <laughs> why, why didn't you tell us about the room i didn't have i didn't have time i walked down the ladder and then by the time i looked around you were gone Mm. I'm not buying it. Mm, no, you could have definitely said, Hey, you guys, I just found this. You were gone. I found this and you were gone. So I hit it down. Mm. Doesn't Jack matter. You're here now. Like, there's a, there, uh, there's a fork in the road. I didn't see anything to the right. To the left, there are a couple of rats. But I think, like, judging from how the uh, um, the last encounter with red mm. two large animals, uh, oversized animals, when... Uh, I didn't want to stir shit up. Um, no. I mean, we killed three pigs, right? Two rats should be no problem. Yeah, yeah but I think it's there might easy. be more rats, and like mm. I didn't want to do anything prudent till you came. Yep, <laughs> prudent. <laughs> Very prudent. I mean, I think if all four of us, uh, you know, we focus them down, we can we can kill some rats, right? Um, do you yeah, want to bless us first? Them. Uh, we can probably sure. take them by surprise. Uh -huh. Okay, so can I can I out of character can I bless them like before the combat starts? Is that yeah, allowed? Yeah, definitely allow that because that okay. is something that you that typically some people will do in preparation for combat. That's not a problem. Okay, so can I do I bless now then? Yeah, so cast your so cast yeah. your spell right as you yeah. normally do. So that's uh, preserve life. You're close. Oh, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will cast at level one. I only get How many two squares like do I see in comparison to the others? I can't really tell you that. You don't. You have your own level of vision, yeah. and they have their own. That would be like me. That would be like um, Daka to... trying to explain to Dimitriov if Dimitriov was short sighted what something looks like at distance. Yeah. Sorry. No, I... Yeah. All right. Sorry, I clicked. The, I clicked that by mistake. I wasn't meant to click that, was I? No, no yeah, you're fine. we do That's each fine. time. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, all three of the party members, aside from Elliot, obviously, are blessed. So, remember, you can then utilize that to take that um, D4 to add to your combat roll and/or um, check ability yeah. check. I sprinkle them with water as I do it. <laughs> Nomish holy water. <laughs> Nomish holy water. Yeah. Well, it doesn't have a red tint, does it? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Doesn't have a red tint, does it? This water you're no, it's, spraying. It's, it's got a yellow it's, tint. It's very. <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to say that. It's very transparent, and it's the it's the most transparent water you've ever seen. No tint <laughs> whatsoever. All right, so um, we've been going for an hour and about forty. Let's take a quick before. Obviously, something's going to go on down here. So let's take a quick two minute break for any restroom breaks, grabbing water. Anything like that, we'll be right back. That's a great oh, idea, yeah. Right, uh, I need to restart my computer, so I'll be back. Be right back.
were you able to get back in, Dadle? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, checking the. I'm logging into fund right now. You got it, brother. <laughs> I love how Elliot described it. It is the most clear, pristine water you've ever seen in your life that I sprinkled all over you. <laughs> well, is it, this is getting quite exciting. Very, very excited. Okay, so for yeah, chat, like um, so boring, what I did was, just so you can see kind of what the <laughs> players see, um, this is uh, Flargo Snarp's view of the map right here. So uh, with this software that we use, um, it gives them a limited range of vision based on um, based on their view or based on their uh, sight within the game itself. So where sometimes you'll see me kind of go back and forth between like a, a wide open map and this, I just wanted chat to see kind of what it looks like for the players themselves. Makane, I love Foundry. I love it, love it, love it, love it. It's fantastic. Yeah, the software is very cool. Yeah, the software is very immersive, right? Mm. But the problem, so some of the problem with, with it is how do you go between the role-playing aspect and too much map play, right? Which mm. is why I do those those thousand feet maps. It's like you guys didn't need a map of every single yeah. home, right? Yeah. It's just not needed. And there are people who go like overboard and do that. Yeah. Too much but then detail. all you end up doing is moving little tokens around and saying, well, can I look under this bed? Can I look in that closet? Just not worth it, right? Sure. <laughs> but then when we get to areas of exploration, that's when you that's when it tends to shine. Uh, for a couple of years now, Makanea. Let's roll. Let's go. I'm all teed up. We're blessed. Okay, so now, um, let's Crossbows have a quick, at let's the have ready. A reminder of how we do this. Um, uh. So whoever is going to somebody needs to be declared as the leader for the party. That person will move in their movement increments. And oh, remember, the if there is a situation that requires either combat or response to something, you may all then declare where you want to be in position to the leader up to 15 feet in any direction with the exception of in front of him or her. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's how we that's how we avoid all of this, what marching order stuff and all of that. Okay, let me, let me lead because I'll be the one that takes the first hit. Uh, Eliod, I need you near me because you've got the torch. Oh, are we wearing armor? Yeah, you guys are fully, fully do, garbed. Do we need to right. equip our weapons? Yeah. I'm gonna get... Do we need to ready our weapons? If you want to ready weapons, yes. I, I want to ready weapons you. because he told me there's a rat down there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, oh. I figured the minute that he mentioned large rats, you guys would have pulled stuff out. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 We're all ready to go. Everybody but Daka. Daka forgot to load his crossbow. No, I'm just no. pulling out a. a <laughs> I'm yeah. pulling out a small dagger. I just have the torch. <laughs> I, do, I don't. I don't pull out my mace. You don't pull out, so you've got your torch, and then what about just your other hand? Do you have your shield out, or are you, are you ready to no, cast spells? No, nothing, okay. I'm ready. Perfect. Yeah. Just for are the... Start I... Anything specific, or just ready to, as your normal play? My axe, my axe. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm just ready. I figured, okay. <laughs> so, Dimitrov, if you want to, feel free. So, open up your player character sheet really quick, and then you can see how many feet per turn you can move. Uh, so... 30 foot. One. But don't. But if you want me to stay close, don't go too fast, because I can only go twenty-five foot. Okay. <laughs> he'll, well, no, he'll go thirty feet, and then you'll just move up right on him, so that way you keep okay. the light with him. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah. moving thirty do foot. The, do you see the boulder on your right hand side? That's thirty okay, feet. So Ellie, move up with him just so we can see. Okay, so you see nothing yet. So really quickly, let me just paint you a picture here. So you've moved a little bit further down the cavern here. It's about a fifteen foot tall, ten foot tall here and there, twelve foot tall. 15, you know, increments cavern. Um, this current rock face is very rocky because there's 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 very few skins, if you will, in game. This is out of character. Um, but the, there is rock amongst the dirt, right? It is it is. There are some areas with some dirt. There's some areas with some rock. There's more. There's there's large stones here and there. There's rocky face. This is not something that was carved out of the ground. It is very natural. Right. Can I, uh, w w one second, guys. I'll just, like, pick up a couple of rocks and, uh, and put them as, in my as part of your, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Mm. And then we can investigate them later in that, can't we? Whatever. <clears throat> Some Keep samples. 
It, it, is is this sorry? Is this stuff on the floor up here meant to be something, or is that just decorative? The, the like the white. Yeah, stuff there's on? just there's just variations. There's some sand oh. here and there. There's some stone here and there. So there's some rock here and there. That's rats. Ooh. Okay, so at that point right there, now you've just there, you've got three, two on the left, one on the right, three very large rats. Uh, um, well, I, I you... see five rats personally. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. So wait, now hold on. Now, now that's perfect because Elliot's got a farther range of distance than the torch gives. Uh... So Elliot, when you see me, I'm describing the scene to the leader, which is Dimitrov, and you feel okay. free to chime in just like that. Okay. There are five rats, Dimitrov. Two to the left, three to the right. Ah. Let's focus okay. them down, boys. Okay, so these rats are again, right? These are the these are the size of um, of small dogs, right? We're talking uh, like um, Elliot size, like bull, <laughs> like like bulldogs, like Elliot size, bulldogs, <laughs> right? Not huge, not like mastiffs. Like we're talking bulldogs, right? But that's yeah. still huge for a friggin' rat. Yeah, and not rats of extraordinary size, though. As well. I mean, is this a bad time to tell you all that I'm terrified of rats? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's some immersion therapy for you. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, um, you, you, uh, the three of you behind Dimitri may position yourself wherever you like within 15 feet of him. Right. No, I go run back. it away. It's <laughs> <laughs> happening again. It's happening again. When you went first to me, of course it's happening again. <laughs> I I go far enough back so that I can just see all the rats. Well, I can only I can only like shield you from one side. Like you're gonna have to mm. deal with the other side. So I mean, I've, I've got a, I've got nothing in my hands. Remember, so <laughs> apart from a torch. <laughs> well, I'll I'll go up and like head off the three rats so they all attack me and then you guys have got to burst the other two down okay mm. so now don't make any moves yet just I you're, you're, I I mean, these rats haven't started them. they're kind of they're they're noticing you like but like from they're not like vicious right they're not like like frothing at the mouth waiting for food looking at you it's just they're kind of looking around they've noticed you they know they see you there have any um, of you got any... haven't made a move on you yet so feel free to discuss anything you'd like to discuss do we think the rats are friendly no, no, they're definitely not fucking friendly. They're rats. <laughs> you yeah, ever but, seen uh, a friendly wild rat? No, they don't rat, exist. Rat, rats are highly <laughs> intelligent. We could try to communicate with them. If you want to no. try and communicate <laughs> to them, Elliot the Nom, be okay. my guest. Go, I, go, I personally, go, hold on, my voice boom. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Oh, I've got no. I've got animal handling plus three. Oh, maybe okay. I. Oh, you could you could uh, you could fucking what's he called? Crocodile Dundee them. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk up to the rat with a small piece of. Have we got any? Didn't get that reference. That was for Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have we got any? Have we got any food on us? Uh, the you have your rations. A bit of bone. Um, uh, I, 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 could I approach a rat and then try and get it to approach me and tame the rats? Tame the rat, yeah. Tame the, tame rat. the rats, Dimitri. Of. <laughs> okay. Oh, <God>. so... <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm like, I'm just uh, as dagger here glorious. is just gonna be like, I'm glorious. too old for this right, shit. Dimitriov, I want you to kind of give me, give me the. Uh, what are you gonna do in order to attempt to quote unquote? Tame these gonna, rats. What, what, what are you doing? I'm, I'm going to walk like half the distance towards one. I'm going to crouch down and I'm going to hold my hand out with some food in it. And then okay. I'm going to whisper, whisper like sweetly. Like, hey, ratty, ratty, ratty. Hey, ratty, ratty, ratty. And then... Okay, so... <laughs> There's got to be a role here for this, right? But I don't know exactly. We know it's an animal handling role. <laughs> Right? Yeah, I got yeah. Animal handling is. Now yeah. I'm not going to tell you what the DC is on this because you've never tried. I'm I'm assuming in your lifetime you've never had intimate intimate relations with a rat to understand. I had, I had a hamster once. <laughs> to understand uh, how it communicates. <laughs> yeah, I had a hamster. <laughs> so, uh, go ahead and move ten feet forward. There you go. Oh, God. And then, 
<laughs> then, uh, <laughs> then give me uh, give me your animal handling check. Oh my god! What a laugh. Fourteen. Okay, so you roll a fourteen. So you you kneel down on one one knee slowly, right? You you take a piece of a ration out of your backpack. You put your backpack back on. You 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 steal you, you steal your face for this audience, for this interaction, right? You drop all expression like the dog whisperer, <laughs> right? <laughs> and you kneel down and and give me what you're saying again one more time, please. Ready, 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 ready. <laughs> Okay, so this rat right here kind of moves forward 10 feet, and he's still kind of looking at you. He's not really sure what to make of it. Ready, ready, ready. Give me one more animal handling roll, Dim. Oh, my God. I'm ready to react. Ah! Can, can, I, can I ready an action here? I know combat hasn't you, you started. You definitely may. But... But and we'll can... say that this is before Dim's roll for the second one. Yeah, yeah. Can I ready an action? And oh, if, no. if 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 the uh, if this rat attacks Dimmy, I will shoot at the other rat. I, I've got I've got an inspiration point, and I can I use my inspiration point? If you oh. want to use your inspiration on that, yes, you may. You get a second roll. Okay, I'm gonna use my inspiration. So, so all you do is just just click on the inspiration, to, and it'll just go away, and then you just take the roll. Now you okay. also. I want to remind you, you also have Bless, which gives you a plus 1d4 if you want to use it for this. Oh. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Dice. I'm assuming you're not going to use your Bless. No, I'm not going to. I'm going to just get attacked by a rat. Oh, my God. <laughs> you ready, ready, ready. Just going to get attacked by a rat. <laughs> it's going to be like the bloody scene out of the... The Holy Grail, would it? Yeah. <laughs> With the white rabbit. Oh. <laughs> okay, so... oh my god! So <laughs> ready, ready, ready! Give me the rat whisperer. <laughs> 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 Strats, man. Like, have, you, have you never tamed a rat okay. before? Okay, so this, so this friggin' rat, right? I'm crying. So this, so this, this, this rat is obviously intri intrigued by this, right? Because rats will eat fucking anything, right? So he kind of moves up towards you. His little eyes are, are reflecting. His little eyes are reflecting, are reflecting in the blue torchlight, right? And he's got these, right, like you've seen, what is it, um, uh, those, the, the hang in there poster with the cat and the eyes are all big. And they're, they're all puppy-like. <laughs> and that little bastard tries to take a little bite out of your hand, dude. He comes in at you, right, because this is the size of a friggin' bulldog. So his mouth is about eight inches long and about three, four inches wide. And he's got these big old friggin'... Uh, big old teeth that are just gnarled and they're in 14 different directions like most rats are. Can I, can I like, try and hit it or something? Or? Can you try and hit it? No, you were trying to tame it, Dimmy. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. oh. <gasps> okay, so one sec, Jim, and then you'll get your attack on the other. Yep, thank you. Can I, can okay, I just so it be like, an, it, they're it not friendly guys! Hand, and it rolls a 17, is that is that higher than your armor class? It is, yeah, I'm 16. Alright, so he, he, he gets you, he gets that, he gets that piece of that ration along with a couple of fingers, right? What?! <laughs> he bit your ass, dude. He gets you for three points of damage. Go ahead and mark that down. And then, um, give me one sec, uh, Daka, you will, everybody will, uh, roll initiative, please. You should, if you pop out your combat tracker, it should be on there. Oh, hang on. Why is it not short terms? So, so, oh, got it, got it. There you go. So, what Perfect, is initiative? Thank you. Uh... Yep, so just, if you just click on the little, yeah, exactly. 
Oof. Oh, wow, these are some bad initiatives, people. <laughs> Jesus. What is this initiative? Do I have to roll? So if you open the two swords at the top right where the combat tracker is, and if you right-click it, it'll give you a pop-out onto your screen. Nice. Oh, look at Flargle Snarp. Wow. Transfixed by Dimmy's interaction with a rat, I'm slow to react. Yeah. I'm even slower. What's she doing? Four. I've, got I've got plus four on the end. That's the slowest. You were, you were beautified by the scene uh, unfolding in front of you. I got a okay, shot so, first, though, at start combat, um, which is good. Jim, since you had an attack readied, yeah. and because you are a crossbow master extraordinaire, mm. um, you will get the attack prior to this combat starting. Thank you very um, much. I will let you know that now that there has been a now that there is the the smell of fresh blood in the air, the other rats have all piqued their interest now. Yep, that's fair. So, um, did it, did we tame a single rat? No, Dimmy did not tame a <laughs> single rat, unfortunately. No. Uh, I got diced. Right, so I'll shoot. I'll shoot this uh, this rat here. Um, yeah. Remember, if you hold down your left ping, that's how I can. There you ah, go. Thank right, you. Okay, hold I figured it down. that was the one. Okay. okay, go ahead and take your roll, and then you will get. Um, because of your ability, you'll get those two attacks if you so choose. I'm assuming you will. All right. Yeah. Do I, do I, do I still get two attacks on the on the readied one? Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make the call that because of how good you are with that crossbow and how fast you load it. Yes. Because that'll be a essentially a bonus action that deals with the firing of that weapon anyway. Right. And I'll be at disadvantage because it's long range, right? That's is that yes. correct? Because it's and it should range. actually um, prompt you for that because of the distance. All right. Well, no, it's actually if you it's if you open up the rat and actually hit target on it, it'll it'll calculate that for you. All right. How do I open the rat? So um, right click, and then on the left you'll see the little target arrow. Right click on the rat. Uh, right clicking doesn't do anything. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah, right, I've got it. Yeah. There you go. Yep. And then, and then do the crossbow thing. And yeah, it says disadvantage. Yeah. Oh, very good. There you go. Yep. Very good. Pew pew, twelve. Pew. Splatter. Okay, so the first, so your first one does strike him. Glorious. Yep. He he's he's able to he he's he's kind of looking. He's kind of creeping forward. You know, low to the ground, <laughs> moving. It's a distance. It's a little bit dark on the edges there, but that bolt does strike him right in his back, right in the as, over his head and into his back, if you will. Four. Yes. Six times. Six points of damage. Pew. Um, I could have, I could have used a thing, couldn't I? Um, I could have used a. Is it too late to use a thing? What's like a menacing thing, attack or whatever. Is it? Is it too late, Jackball? No. Oh no, no, no. By no. all means, if it's this is a regular attack, and you're allowed to use those your abilities during your regular attack. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if it's like you know once I've rolled, if it's too late or not. That was what I was thinking. Um, uh, I couldn't quite hear you. I'm sorry, my friend. I didn't know if it was too late once I'd rolled, you know, for like the no, damage, no. if that made it too late, right? Is oh, it no. features? Again, you guys are getting used to your character sheets. Right. This isn't Blood Bowl. Yeah, so I'll do, I'll do Menacing Attack, um, which is, right, so the add, add the superiority dice to the damage, and then it's a Wisdom Saving Throw for the rat. Yep. All right, so roll your so, so when you when you hit the declare, yep. Yeah, there's the other formula again. If you remember from last session, click yep. that. There's <laughs> the added damage. One more damage. And then wisdom roll or what, sir? Uh, yeah, w wisdom. A wisdom saving throw, and on a failed save, it's frightened until the end of my next turn. Okay, so it just moves no closer to you. Yeah. All right, so fails that one. So you, you, it, the minute it takes that shot into its back, once again, just like the boar, don't ask me how it knows, <laughs> but it's like, I ain't screwing with this guy, right? There's something there um, in his, you just make him second guess life again for a second. <laughs> Glorious. And uh, seeing as there's so many of them, I guess I should... Uh... I should shoot the other one as well, then, the other one miles away. <laughs> uh, I want to remind you again that, that once again, Daka yelled out, let's let's focus fire him down, boys. And yeah. has once again decided to spread his fire across several targets. Yeah, but it's disabled, isn't it? For, oh, it's already yellow. Okay, no, it's already yellow on, on just that one little hit. So, no, I, I will shoot this again and try and try and get rid of it. Yeah, okay. I'll zoom. Uh, but then it's out, it's out for a round, isn't it? So... Uh... 
It's interesting, I guess, and I could just shoot this other one next turn. Um, okay, so that would be a disadvantage, definitely, because um, Dimmy's in the way. And then a failure of one, like a critical failure, would have Dimmy rolling again. Oh, no, no, I'm not going to shoot. I'm, go I'm thinking my next turn I could run forward and shoot the other one. Okay, yep, there you go. Um, Thank you. But but this turn I might shoot this other one. How, how do I fucking right click? Oh, yeah, right. Double, right double click it is. So yep. I could shoot that one, couldn't I? And then try menacing that as well. So I now, Elliot's in front of you, but he is a, a small stature creature, so you will be able to... So that's a situation, again, you can fire right over him and not worry. Glorious. So if Elliot was going in one-to-one -one combat with something that was man-sized or larger, medium-sized or larger, you won't have to... Amazing. Pew, shoot over Elliot's head. That's got him, hasn't it? <laughs> right over Elliot's head. So did you do a normal... Yeah, disadvantage at 14. Okay, so you hit. Roll for damage. Boosh. It's good damage. I'm sorry, I put too little damage. Hold on one second. Oh, Any other damage. thing you're doing there? Uh, that's it. No, that's my two. That was my two okay. attacks. So, Flargo Snurp, my friend, you are up. You are muted, Flag or Snop, just FYI. Oh, yeah, he is muted. Uh, I thought I had something for this, uh, uh, but it doesn't look like it. Uh, well, I'll just call uh, cast uh, Acid Splash uh, on two targets. Uh, so the ones that uh, uh, Jimmy shot at. Now, second. Uh, so I can see the two closest one, the badly injured one, and one to the left of it. Um, okay, so if you double click on, on them, you'll, it'll give you your target for the roll. Or what? What should you I double click on? Whichever one you want to shoot first. Does it not register? You've got Jim, right. how did you get it to target? D double right click is what I had to do. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. Double right click. I apologize. Do you see how your dot is above it? And then do you see on the one that Jim shot, he has a red dot above it? That means he's currently targeting that. All right. Um, and now... Can trip. Perfect. So roll uh, for damage, and then there's a saving throw of, of DC 11 dexterity. But I want to shoot at both. Yeah, we'll do one and one, and then the next. All right. Uh, quick damage. Yep. Normal. All right. So he he makes the oh. um, he makes the dexterity roll, so he does not take damage from that first one. He he dodges slightly oh, out of the way. Me. Say again. I said, fuck's sake. <laughs> I hit a single... Oh, Come on. <laughs> All right, now you want, to attack, you want to attack the second rat? Yeah. It's a beautiful. Now um, double right click on the one you're hitting and then hit your damage. Man, it's so laggy for me. Okay, so he makes his dexterity save as well. Very dexterous rats. Very dexterous mm. little rats, right? Oh, wow, the animation's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And I, I actually made his animations green because he's chosen uh, green to be one of his core colors there. So, mm. All right, so Flargo Snurp, if you will, are you, do, do you have any uh, desire to move at all? No. Okay, so go ahead and, and remember at the bottom, end your turn. Yeah, I'm um, trying to tracker there. down another program just to, like, get anything to respawn. He's got to turn his prawn off. <laughs> All 
All right, so these rats. How fast are these rats? <laughs> They're fast. Holy run rat, comes, <laughs> run rat comes out of the darkness and charges at uh, at Dmitriov. Oh, it's 50 feet. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're fast, aren't they? We, we can move thirty, right? Like just uh, yeah. So just he's walking. so what he's doing is he's using both of his moves. So he's charging. So he cannot uh, attack as a result of that. Okay. So if he's if he's dashing, if he's dashing, uh, he's allowed to move uh, twice his rate. Kind of that. Oof. Okay, this rat's gonna bite at Dimitriov again, man. He got he's like, hey man, that, that food was pretty freaking good. <laughs> His finger didn't taste bad either. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Pro DM strats right there, baby. So he critical hits <laughs> critical hits Dim. <laughs> Can I, can I, like, parry this? So read what your parry is. I believe you can, yes. Yeah. It says, when another creature damages you with a melee attack, you can use your reaction, expend one superiority die to reduce the damage by the number you roll on your superiority die, plus your dexterity modifier. Perfect. So what you're going to do is Not you're going to left-click that ability after I click the damage. Okay. And then a little, little thing will pop up that needs you to roll, and then you'll just roll that and we'll take that off the damage. Right, so he hits you for seven points of damage. Can you use this ability? Uh. So he gets you for two points of damage then, Dim. Okay, so if I... All right, Elio Danam, you are up, my friend. <clears throat> Parry that bat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, very bad timing there. I'm having a, bit, having a snack during the middle of this fight. Would you a bit, a bit of sausage pie, chips, lovely stuff? Oh, nice. oh. you, you, like, you like can take care of yourself. Start guys. eating lunch right here during the battle. <laughs> uh, all right, so I am going to cast command on this this here rat in front of me. Mm. Um, so let's see. You speak a one-word command to a creature you see in range. The target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or follow a command. So. Oh, it's going to be How the wisest I, uh... rat in okay, all of <laughs> <laughs> the target must succeed. Oh, what, what's the okay. difference between levels? Sorry, higher levels, when you cast a spell, you can affect one additional creature. Mm, no, I'll just use the level one to cast. Yeah, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now I want you to read, read the statement there. The spell has no effect if the target is undead, if it doesn't oh, understand fuck. your language, or if your is <laughs> No, 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 we, we've, we, we, we can communicate with the rats, we've covered this. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, oh, right. can, can I take... <laughs> <laughs> I have a very high-pitched voice, I'm sure the rats will understand. Uh, can, can I... <laughs> Can I can I can I take back the spell? Is is that allowed? Oh, yes, yes, yeah, you may. Th th again, thank you, thank you. Damn, yeah, I I I, I had this all planned out. Now it's all gone wrong. Um, oh, <laughs> I, I I I need a second then. Uh, out of curiosity, out of curiosity, Elliot, what what were you going to command the rat to do? <laughs> oh, to flee, to flee. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. Um. Hmm. Oh wow. Um. So I have this spell, Shield of Faith. Uh, it says, uh, a shimmering field appears and surrounds a creature of your choice within range. Can that include myself? I'm sorry, say that again? Read, read that? Uh, so the spell says, Shield of Faith, a shimmering field appears and surrounds a creature of your choice within range, granting it a bonus uh, 2 plus to AC for the duration. Yes, could, you are, hmm. you, by D&D rules, you are designated a creature. So yes, okay, you could. sure. Uh, I really want to. Okay. D uh... Dimmy's being beset by three rats. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yes, but I've got one rat on me, D Jimmy. <laughs> how, how, how much. Oh, Dimmy parried it. So did Dimmy not take any damage from that I last took, rat? I took two, two points. So I'm down to oh, 30. Yeah. 
Okay, okay. But they can't um, roll natural 20s all night. Was, you know I was I mean? going to oh shoot myself and, and heal you, but you've not actually taken much damage, have you? So, okay then, fine. I'll cast Shield of Faith on um, on on Dimmy as well, too. Uh, so just on Dimmy then? Uh, oh, I've, I just I just wasted one of my um, spell slots uh, on that last spell. Uh, oh, I think, by the way. So, well, you've got Bless. Let me... Let me... There, Thank you should have three yeah. out of four now. Yeah, cheers, yeah. So, uh, I think it's, yeah, just on... Damn it, I keep pressing these too many times. Here we go. So, there's... Cast a spell. There's Shield of Faith, yeah. Yeah, on a creature of your choice, Dimmy, yeah. Um, so, I read from a bit of parchment and chuck it away. <laughs> but do, but does, does this mean that they don't get blessed anymore now, right? Because now I'm concentrating on Shield of Faith oh. instead. Right? Oh, well, it's probably, that's probably not worth doing, is it? Because Bless is like you... letting us hit them and kill them. But he has got three rats banging on him. Yeah, but if we kill them, then they're not banging on him. I mean, it's up to you, isn't it? I don't know. My my love for Dmitriov <laughs> inspires my, you know, my, my, my instincts, you know, trips tri tri my instinct for protection. As a healer, I look first to uh, preventing damage rather than banging on rats. And I and I cast shield of faith. Okay, I've seen so you play Elliot, Blood Bowl. Yeah, you're not. You don't like banging on rats. Blocks his concentration <laughs> from his bless spell. Um, so everybody loses. Obviously, their 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 bless um, reaches uh, reaches into his 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 innermost fortitude of gnomedom, right? And sends and you see you see this this soft shimmering blue um, instantly appear around Dimmy and kind of fade away. Um, and then Dimmy, just remember now uh, that you have plus two to your armor class. Okay, so it's 18 then at the moment. Thank you, Elliot. And I shout to Daka and uh, the uh, Flago Star, I am beset by a rat. Help me. <laughs> I am beset <laughs> upon. I shall, so, I shall shout back. I would. With me. I would, but now I feel like I'm going to miss by D4 points. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dimitriov, you're up. Yes, so I am... Um, going to action surge Four. Uh, which uh, so it says starting at second level you can push yourself beyond your normal limits for a moment One on your turn you can take one additional action on top of your regular action and a possible bonus action once you use this feature you must finish a short rest before you can use it again so I'm gonna just basically attack two rats, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, so I see you've already targeted one of them. So go yeah. ahead and just click on your axe there. Uh, inventory. Attack. Yes. Beautiful. You your your axe comes down right on top of the back of the of of your little friend whom you were trying to <laughs> trying to befriend earlier. There is sorrow <laughs> in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> For a brief second, you you thought you saw love in his eyes. <laughs> when that little bastard bit you, man, you dropped your axe on him a moment later. And then damage, yeah. Yep, roll damage. It's nine, wow. twelve. Okay, so you take that that axe just cleaves right right. He's got a he's got a very. He's got a big wound in him. He's bleeding like crazy. He's not dead, but he's he's, he's in bad, bad shape. That wood axe, that took something out of him there. And then you're going to action surge, so go ahead and click the button or uh, the picture for action surge so it takes away one of your one of your set. points. And then feel free to go ahead and then take another attack on whomever you would like there around you. I want to attack this guy. Whoa. Another another strike. Look at this. Dimmy's hitting people now, baby. Go ahead and uh, roll for your damage. Are you still alive? No, he's dead. Ah. Nope, that one is dead. So Dimmy, Dimmy's axe comes down, cleaving that rat in two. So with a very deft maneuver with this axe, right, he swings over one shoulder and then down, pulls that axe up, Twists it around and then with a left-handed grip comes down on the other rat on the other side, cleaving that one in two. And then do I get a bonus action? Do you have a bonus action listed on your um, character sheet? Uh, how does that mean? 
Okay, so if you go to features, yeah, see where it says there active abilities. Bonus action was sec could be second win, or could oh, be quick toss. Quick toss. Yeah, I'm gonna quick toss. Right, so these are my Hancocks. These are my throwing axes with rope on. And I'm going to quick toss the rat next to Eliod. Can I use that as a bonus action then? You made, yes, absolutely. All right, and we're going to we're gonna whip out our Hancock and... <laughs> I'm going to dash it at the rat. And we're going to probably miss. Oh, hang on. Okay, now you uh, have to... So you click the weapon first, usually. Oh, uh, hold on. Well, uh, you, either way. So click on the Hancock. Ah, uh, here we go. Attack, here we go. There you go. And then attack. Oh, oh, boo. Okay, so you, you, you whip out your Hancock. <laughs> you know, I've been waiting to say that for the longest time. You whip out your Hancock, right? So you, you definitely hit both of these rats. You spin around, pull a Hancock from its uh, from its from from your uh, belt loop, and sling it at the, the, at the giant rat. Um, misses. It goes just over him. Uh, into the ground behind him. Now remember, this is where um, you need to give me a um, dexterity roll at a DC 12 or higher to retrieve it back into your hand. Dexterity. Remember, this is special to your character sheet. Uh, I don't know what dexterity is. Oh, here we go. Dexterity ability check. Normal. Exactly. Oh! oh, oh, hey. oh. <laughs> as fast as it swings over the rat's head, you yank on the cord whipping it right back into your hand. Oh, I'm so sick of this game. <laughs> All right, so hit hit forward on your combat tracker there, please. Yeah. Uh, forward. And I'm then, Daka, there. you're up next, sir. Yep. Right, well, I shall, uh, shall come in here. And Wait, show... sorry, what's a, what's a Hancock? Oh, my God. Have you seen Prey? <laughs> Out of character. Prey is uh, the, 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 the new. <laughs> Thanks for that clarification, Timmy. Wow. It's, it's the new Predator film, and um, the girl. I actually learned this from a twelve-year-old girl. Um, she's got these axes, like throwing axes, but they've got ropes attached to them. So, like, you throw the axe, and then like you whip the axe back with. Uh... I'll send you a video. Anyway. Mm. Basically, tomahawks, it's, aren't it's they? an American tomahawks. Indian throwing axe, right? A hatchet, basically, a tomahawk. Mm. Mm. And she's got um, a cord of leather attached to it. And when it hits the tree or hits the target, she whips on the cord and pulls it right back into her hand again. <laughs> and it's spelled Hancock like the... No, it's uh, not spelled. We, we named it the Hancock. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, it is not. This is not a, a, a some out otherworldly coincidence there, Dato. We just yeah. we had to come up with a good name, and I'm like, the only way I'm giving you this weapon, Dimmy, is if we name it the Hancock. <laughs> I, know that, I know that a Hancock is like the signature after John Hancock. Um, yeah, that's a John Hancock. That, that's close, yeah, yes. But, but I thought that it might have like some other... Some like, derivation? I, no. Yeah, because <laughs> the surname Hancock like that might come from something. Mm. All right. Right, so I'll, I'll run up all around behind this rat and then shoot it in the face. <laughs> okay. I love that your family name is Hancock. Hancock. <laughs> Boom. It's got him. Okay, so it? 19 hits, so roll for damage. I'm sorry that it's not from throwing Six axes. damages. Okay, so your, uh, your, your bolt strikes. Four. Dead. Yep, dropping the rat dead. You you put a you put a you put a crossbow bolt from your hand crossbow right through his friggin' eyes. Nice. Right through his eye. Not his eyes, but his eye. <laughs> and then you've got your, I believe your bonus action allows you to fire again. Well, I could action surge, couldn't I? Uh Yes, you definitely could if you wanted to. Yeah, I shall action action surge and shoot this other rat. Pew pew. Oof, that might be a Okay, miss. twelve hits. Okay, it's a few. Um, and then... You roll for damage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Woo! And... Nice hit. Yes, I think I will... He's not uh, looking too good. Yeah, I think I'll, uh, I'll... And then I'll use my bonus attack to shoot him again. <laughs> <laughs> to shoot which one? That that the one. one is targeted. Perfect. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And uh... 
Well, yeah, I've just okay, seen... Okay, uh, dirty 20 does hit, obviously. Roll for damage, please. Four. Pew, pew. All right, and that rat drops dead as well. So we have three rat carcasses on the ground so far, obviously. Glorious. Now, I've got, I've got a bit of movement left up now. That was, what, one, two, three, four, five. That was 25 feet, so I can go back another five. All right, perfect. And is Thank that you, Daka. You... Don't forget to click on your action, sir, oh. Daka, there on your yeah, character sheet yeah, just I so totally... it uses up the ability, please. Yeah, I totally forgot to do that. I do apologize. Yeah, it's okay. And then go ahead and end your turn. Uh... You're not excused. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. That's <laughs> that. And end the fucking turn, man. Oh, yeah, okay, that so menacing attack was no good on that because it's... Uh... Yeah, because he was he was the last one in the turn to move, unfortunately. He was the initiative five. One. He was he was the only guy who was slower than you. <laughs> <I've done that. laughs> Alright, so he's gonna move in twenty five feet and he's gonna bite it dim. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, this yeah. time Dimmy who's now in 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 high form, right? He he was he was taken aback by that little bastard, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that he was trying to to befriend and feed, right? And he threw out his hand there and 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 he was just a little bit off his game, but he's not off his game anymore, man. But he's killed two of them. He's or he's killed one of them. I'm sorry. He has another one near death and was able to dodge the other one. Glorious. Where are all these giant rats appearing from? <clears throat> so oh another God. rat peels from around the corner. Oh, oh, me. Don't like this. <laughs> oh. Jesus, from the oh God, how many rats are there? Are there? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's a of, large number of rats. Lots of rats. It's an infestation! Flipping rats. Imagine being this obsessed by rats. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, I'm going to add them to the initiative tracker now and we'll start the next round. Flip me. <clears throat> well, okay, Flargle Snarf is still up first. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's time for my favorite. Uh, time for my favorite spell. <laughs> oh, good lord! Uh, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> whenever he starts, whenever he starts salivating at the mouth, we worry, right? <laughs> All right, uh, Spellberg. Um, so we're casting this, obviously, uh, with. Um, as a careful spell, okay, and uh, attempting to shield my teammates. Attempting, I like that. Very, very mm. good use of words. Uh, what spell are you trying uh, to cast? Just so I can. A thunder wave. Okay, so I'm gonna make. I'm gonna let me let me make something apparent here. So thunder wave, obviously, it's a it's a force wave, right? You're in a cave. Yeah. <laughs> It makes a thunderous boom that people can hear up to 300 feet away. You're in a cave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? So there will be other repercussions. I'm just telling you because <laughs> a, a goblin who has come from a cave dwelling environment would yeah. know this. So I'm gonna if you want yeah, to cast a spell, you're more than welcome to. But you're in a you're in a cave system where you're about to cast yeah, a spell with a giant shock wave. <laughs> P and please. the sound wave that travels a minimum of 300 feet without echo. P please don't. <laughs> Just throwing that out there, right? I want then. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Just just throwing that out there. <laughs> That's like the guy who cast fireball in a 10 by 10 room with everybody in it. <laughs> Against the dexterity... <laughs> Dexterious? <laughs> right? Dexterous. Yeah. Dexterous. 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 
<laughs> Apparently, they can be hit by crossbolts just fine, but acid spra splashing in their fucking face, they can dodge. <laughs> yeah, but this is an expert crossbowman, like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> He's renowned. Un unlike the dragon, the dragon. Uh, oh my god, the dev rats are running away. <laughs> <gasps> yeah, I'm moving them out of the way because they're they're not blocking anything from you guys moving around. Just to clear the battlefield a little, you could easily step over them. Glorious. What about the rat meat? We can get that later. Are okay. you saying <laughs> Elliot can burgers. easily step over an animal the same <laughs> size? <laughs> he's, he's not a foot and a half tall. I think I cool. I mean... Okay, so uh, the one above you is who you were targeting? Yeah. <clears throat> Alright, so he makes the save, so he's good. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I love the way you three are fighting three rats and I'm fighting three rats. <laughs> <laughs> this feels... Okay, which one were you striking? The, one, the new one or the other one? The one just left of me. Do you get bonus action every turn? Yeah. Okay. Are you, yes, if you have bonus actions, that is... Okay, that one you hit. Congratulations. Oh, oh my god, he hit something. Oh, one one actually stop. did something Woo. one time. It's going to do one point of damage now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so the little green, the green acid splash protrudes from your hand, right? Shoots out. Hits this, hits this little rat right in his friggin' face, dude. And it's like a scene out of what was that? Um, it was a Gremlins where he comes out of the water and like his his face is is peeling off of his skull. <laughs> he isn't dead yet, but but you've done some damage to him. Nice. Finally. Finally. Now two campaigns. We're gonna get two, back. two sessions. Two we sessions. To hit one spell. Is there something else you wanted to do? Yeah, it doesn't seem a great spell, that does it? Well, you I got all of you guys are level three. He'll, his anything. spells will increase as he goes as well. Is is that just a cantrip spell as well? Yeah. But yeah. Like yeah. it doesn't. Like I don't have any. I have my like, four spells that are like damaging spells, and two of them are just like all right. Everyone's gonna dodge them every single fucking yeah. time. Mm -hmm. And one of them is like, yeah, it's super expensive regen. And if I cast that, then I can't cast anything mm. useful like until I rest again. So yes, yeah. like, yeah, same. Are you done with your turn there? Uh, and I don't have any bonus actions worth anything, right? But here we go. Every every rat gets to activate now. <laughs> yep. Three, two, one. <laughs> activate. <It's slow. laughs> All right, bear back. Okay, so this rat's moving in and is going to attack Jim. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, he's going to attack Daka. Um, because there is another rat within touching distance, within five feet of him, he uses pack tactics, which gives oh. him an advantage. Cheeky nice. rat. Nice. Isn't Daedal like an assist though? <laughs> yeah, what about assist? Okay, does a 14 hit your armor class, Jim? Uh, it does okay. not, no. It does not because. Okay, uh, so he takes a little swipe at you, is not able to hit you. 16. If you just got to equal the uh, armor class. Equal or beat, yes. Yeah, yeah, equal. So no, it's 16 anyway. Okay, this one's going to attack. Uh... This one's going to attack uh, Dimitriov with advantage because of his, his two buddies near him. Mm. Yeah, I've got 18 armor class. Because I'm still shielded, right? Yeah. Yep. Oh, he's done this. Nice. Ah, he gets a 22. Motherfucker. <laughs> For six points of damage. Jesus. So... <laughs> Poor Dimmy, dude. Correct, <laughs> mate. <clears throat> okay. This one here is going to attack Flargo Snarp again with advantage. Oof. He's swarmed by rats. <laughs> it's just like Blood Bowl. <laughs> Blood Bowl. Oh, my oh my god. Oh my god. For six points of damage. <laughs> <laughs> just maxing the rolls here. God. 
Do you know how to take your uh, hip? Oh, he's not even here. <laughs> he's not even here. Oh, shit. <laughs> we'll just let him know when he gets I'll back. I'll adjust his sheet. <laughs> oh, you, you can do that. Okay. Brilliant. <clears throat> Okay, this rat's going to attack Dimitriov with advantage again. <gasps> with an 18. Oh. Oh. Yeah, 18, yeah. No, just... Last. For five points of damage. Just this rat's going to attack Flargal Snarp <laughs> with advantage. Where were these rolls? Huh. Yeah. Okay, the, so that does not break his armor class, so that, that rat misses. Hmm. And Elliot the Nom is up next. Alright, so is there any order in which I need to take my action and my bonus action? Can I do my bonus action first? Or no, there is no... Way? You can do... Mm. Whatever okay. you choose to do, you can do in any order. Remember, including split in my... You can split up your movement, yeah. provided you don't cause an attack of opportunity. Sure. So I will channel divinity. I will channel the power of the, the chief engineer as my bonus action, and I will use uh, not turn undead. Um, I will use <clears throat> preserve life. Uh, let me just get that. Uh, oh, that was already on bars. Oh well, whatever. Uh, preserve. Oh, I've clicked it twice. Preserve life. Uh, you can use your channel divinity to heal the body injured. You present your holy symbol and evoke healing energy to restore. Uh, 15 hit points, five times my cleric level, uh, to any creatures split within between any creatures within 30 feet of you. So I, I raise. Sorry. Oh no, go ahead. Perfect. Oh, so I, I I raise my I raise my symbol, Chief Engineer. I beseech you, grant me the <laughs> heartbeat of quartz to restore the vigor of my allies, and I um, <laughs> and I I I restored. Mm, Mm, let me have a look at them. Uh, <laughs> I'm just doing a bit of triage here. Uh, 12 That's points fine. of damage to Demetrios. Oh, Dimit amazing. Dimit 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 and three points of damage to Flargle Snart. Glorious. I'm basically full. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, and then I also, uh, my action, I cast a cantrip, um, Sacred Flame. Um, oh. On uh, this is this, this is another shit one like Daedal's Acid Splash <laughs> <laughs> out of character <laughs> on, on the on, oh wait I can target it right target it yes uh, how do I uh, is that, is that it I... to... sorry Isla needs to go I uh, I'll I'll just walk her quickly so I'll be back in five to ten minutes so you can skip yeah, my you're fine. I will um, like, I'll play your turn for you brother yeah, all right cheers you know, he... uh, have I targeted correctly there. Uh, yeah, do you see your little blue dot above? I, I see four red arrows going like that. And that's yeah, targeting for yeah. you. Okay, yeah. okay For cool, us, it looks cool. like a dot. For you, it's got the, yes. Great, yeah. So, uh, right, here we go. Sacred Flame. Uh, so, um, flame-like radiance descends on a creature that you can see within range. The target must succeed on a dexterity saving throw, just like Daedal's spell, or take 1d8 radiant damage. Uh, no benefit from cover. Uh, so I, I roll the damage first, right? Or, or... You roll the damage, then I roll the, uh, the reaction, yes. Damage is five. Oh, get back to us! Beautiful. Got him. So, yep, so he, so he takes five points of damage. Barbecue rats. <laughs> Barbecue. Wield him of the sacred flame of uh, Undoom or whatever. <laughs> sacred flame of the. Of, it's no, it's no Balrog, but still. <laughs> All right, so that was your bonus action followed by your action. Yeah, I, I can't, I'm not going to move because there's big hairy rat in my face. So. Okay, perfect. <laughs> kill, 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 kill that. Sorry. It's me in it. It's on the Dimitriov. Yes, Elliot, please uh, move forward in your. Oh, combat. sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. Oh, you're good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he can still do stuff without it. I just want to make sure that we're yeah, following yeah. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm attacking the uh, rat south of me. Ooh. Okay, wow. that's a good strike. Rick is so you savage. Axe back around the <laughs> and then uh, we're gonna damage that rat. Timmy hates getting blitzed on by rats. Get your rat out. Ah. Oh. 
Is he not dead? Dead? Yeah, he's dead. And then yes. I'm going to use my bonus action. I'm going to whip my Hancock out again. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to attack this rat that's near death. And we're going to okay, polish. Okay, so this is a, this is a um, ranged weapon within five feet of you. So okay. this one is with disadvantage. With disadvantage. So, I... so when, you, when, you, when you attack... Hang on. Uh... Oh, it won't let me do it. Is it because I've already done it once or something? I don't know. So, oh, oh no, I see. Be... No, no, I, need... see, I think I have to go to bonus actions to do it. So, quick toss. It says usability, but it doesn't say with disadvantage. Oh, you, because you, you, what you do is you attack with a handcock, and that's the. So you click on <clears> the ability, so it uses the point. Okay. Then click on your Hancock and hit uh, and then disadvantage. Hancock. So Hancock, attack, disadvantage. Oh, got him. Have I got him? Got him. 12 gets 12. Him. So yep, you hit him. You, you nail him with that Hancock. Roll for damage. Oh my <laughs> god. He's... Oh. That must... Get him? Yeah, he was yeah. really dead. He was nearly dead. Is he dead? Okay, He's uh, dead. Do your dexterity. Um, do your dexterity check to retrieve the Hancock. Out. Oh my god, I'm gonna whip the Hancock straight out <laughs> of his ass. <laughs> and I'm gonna uh, uh, dexterity. He's up the top, isn't it? Save and throw. Oh, I get it! Man, I am hard. skilled! I'm so skilled with these Hancocks, man. <laughs> okay, now try ah. forward to DACA, please. <laughs> wow. Um, that's I'm unbelievable. Like whipping this around, man. Right. Uh, well, obviously, I've got to shoot the badly injured one and try to kill it. So. Yep, and then you suffer no disadvantage because you're a crossbow expert. Indeed, yep. So I'll just whack that. So good at this game. Oh, Glorious. okay, that strikes. So roll for damage, please. <clears throat> Oof. Does that get him? Yeah, boy. Oh. Dead, dead, dead. Dead, dead, dead. Uh, and then, uh, 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 bonus action, of course. Shoot the one directly in front of me now. Go for it. Four. Nice strike. Four. And uh, I think I will use... Well, I've, I've got roll damage anyway, right? So, yeah, I'll roll the damage. Yeah, use uh, hit for damage first. And then I shall use some kind of sexy effect on it as well. Which will be... Uh, A sex effect. Tri <laughs> trip attack. Not... Oh. <laughs> um... yeah, so, in his case, using a trip attack with a hand crossbow, being a fighter... He would have he would have aimed for the front left paw of the rat. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm oh. gonna try and get rid of two of its toes with this attack. <laughs> I thought it was like three shots, like a tri like a triple attack. Yeah. Oh, no, no, like no, he's, he's trying to trip over a rat. <laughs> yeah, trying to trip a rat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's even worse than it sounds. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, right, so what it's, does trip attack do? Um, it's got to make a strength saving throw on a failed save. It's knocked prone. Okay, you're gonna knock the you're gonna knock the giant rat prone. Yep. You're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna knock the R O U S prone, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's a saving throw, correct? Yes, yeah, strength. Yeah. Okay, six. Yeah, so he's now prone. Glorious. Just a quick question. You have to like um, make it make a check or something if you like disengage from a, a an enemy unit. Uh, what attack if they're of opportunity. prone? Yeah, Ooh. that's it. Yeah, does a prone unit make an attack of opportunity? Yeah, that's a good question. So I would technically, if you're prone, you have to stand up, which costs half of your move before you can make an attack. Hmm. Typically. Hmm. Um, there's also attacks from the floor at disadvantage. So I'm ah. going to say we'll still get the attack on you, but it will be at disadvantage. Cool, cool, cool. Right. Just uh, tickle its belly and go, ratty, ratty, ratty. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've already tried that, Dim. I leave that to the expert. <laughs> I still think, I, well, in that case, if it's got disadvantage, 
It's if I don't run away, it's going to attack me next turn anyway, right? Because it's going next. Yeah. So oh no, Flagel's going first, so Flagel might try oh, and kill yeah. it. So in fact, Flagel should try and kill it because it's near death. It doesn't make any attack to attack the uninjured. I don't know, man. He's getting he's getting very frustrated here. You know, he's just not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So um. So yeah, I think Flagel will. Let's it. see. So. All right, so instead of using his Acid Splash Cantrip, he is going to use his Poison Spray Cantrip because this incurs a, uh, a saving throw versus Constitution versus Dexterity. Mm. Poison Spray. All right, so it would take four points of damage. Provided it doesn't make a con save. I don't imagine the rats care that much for the constitution. No. No, plus So it's a 13. What is it, DC of? 11. Or is it his oh. own DC? He just doesn't do anything. <laughs> okay, so it's his own DC, so that's 11. So I think he's got a, he would have a con save of 14, so he misses that. Oh. All right. Well, hey. If I did my math right, I'm going to let it go anyway. I'll figure out my math on that one later. If it if it missed as as a, then I'm, I'm going to let it stand. All right, and then Flargal. Let me see what his bonus action is. He also can do. He can do nimble escape, and I wanted to see. <clears throat> Yeah, so he's going to use Nimble Escape. He's going to use the Disengage action, which allows him not to take an, an attack of opportunity, and he's going to bone the hell out. <laughs> and he's going to get this side of Elliot. He's going to swing around so he's still in combat range, but away from these rats. He's Dakar in Dakar. He is, isn't he? Yeah, dirty bastard. I knew I should have okay, run away. Okay, so this rat, now that his target one. of opportunity is gone, moves one. in on Dakar. Fucking Flagel. Honestly, you can't trust a goblin, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible well, target priority. Caster, Jim. I mean, come on. Terrible target priority. <laughs> <laughs> Attack with advantage because of uh, pack tactics still. Oh, God. And he rolls oh. A oh. Harry. Seven points of damage, Jim. Yeah, fantastic. No parry? I, I haven't got parry, have I? I've got like. Oh, you remember when I said parry was good, Jim? I did. It's okay. Seven's fine. Remember, if you just target priority. <laughs> Mate, I've been prioritizing the targets. I've had to prioritize. <laughs> I don't even know how to do this. Oh, here we go. Yeah, just enter it in and press enter. Yeah. Okay, so this rat's going to attack Dimitriov. Um, regular attack because one of his buddies isn't around. Regular attack. He's going to roll on a nat 20 because that's all you roll, Jack Ball. <laughs> no, he doesn't. No, hey! Oh, <laughs> Unbelievable. We're getting back to our more normal rolls, right? And then this one gets his attack of opportunity on Jim. With, Daka, with, I should say. With advantage. With advantage. Come on. Yeah, yeah don't forget the advantage. Hey! Right, nine, so that misses. Get out of town. And Elliot, sir, you are up. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> quick, quick question. So I have this, uh, the disciple of life thing that gives bonus healing when I cast a spell uh, that heals units that restores yes. hit points. So you should have had two additional hit points. Yeah. So, but do, does that apply to my bonus? Does it that apply to any and all healing? Okay. Because it's so the thing is, it, it says. Um, it says that the, the amount of healing it incurs depends on the level of the spell. But what's the level of my channel divinity? I don't understand that. That would just be a regular, just a, a first level spell because it's okay. not a technically a spell. Okay, yeah, um, exactly, I know yeah. that there was an FAQ on that, how it affects it. Yeah. I will research that for next time, but let's just go with the regular bonus that you usually get and whomever you'd like to give it to. Okay, so that would be two, two three. So I think, I think that would be... So it, that that would be that would be everyone I regain I gave hit points to right I think would get the no you would hit. you would add an additional three points to the pool that you were giving out so it adds to the mm. amount of healing you do but it says whenever you use a spell of first level or higher to restore hit points to a creature 
the, the creature regains additional hit points. Oh, equal then to there you go. Yep. Those are good. We'll do it both. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I might, might be wrong. No, no, no. That's, just, fine. Just, that's just, fine. Just I'm by sure the wording, that's what I just on that Because of yeah. that ability, yeah. I'll find it later. I'm not worried about it. Fair enough. Um, so see. everybody gets an additional. So um, Flargle and and, Doc, and Dimitri have both get what now? Additional Th three. Like I don't mind if we add them now. Like because I because I forgot. I was just warning for future usage mostly. I took away three. One second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, Dimitri, you can add three more hit points to you from Elliot's heal from last turn. Oh, lovely. <laughs> um, and then Elliot, and yeah. you are up, my friend. Yeah, so I'm going to cast uh, Sacred Flame, I guess, uh, again, trying to try barbecue this. Uh, uh, oops, uh, there we go. Barbecue this rat. This uh, this gnome does seem to like barbecues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tasty. Roll for Everyone damage. Five. And then a dexterity. Uh, kill, him. Show. kill him, Elliot. Kill him. And what is the DC on that? A DC 12. So he does he take half damage or no damage? No damage. No damage. Okay, so you miss with the Sacred Flame. He's able to dodge out of the way. Uh, and, and I enter, yeah. Right. Moi? So I'm gonna right, kill Dimitri this. Is up next. I'm gonna kill this right in front of me with my axe, and then you know what's happening, boys. You know what time <laughs> is. You know, know what time, time is. is. <laughs> oh! Ah! You okay, sure you're so gonna you call that right in front of you? Swing. <laughs> whiff! All right. Whiff big. Well, it's a bit. It may be a big rat, but it is a dexterous big rat. Right. Okay. We are. We are gonna. Uh, we are going to do this, because we can. Oh, hang on. I've done that wrong. There we go. And now, we, we're going to go for the rat in front of Daka, because Daka needs help, and Eliod has helped me, so... That almost touched me. <laughs> so this is with is this with this isn't with disadvantage, no, right? Because no, no, this is because you have somebody within five feet of you. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay. You, essentially, what it means is you're paying attention to somebody. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Okay, so a, a thirteen does hit. So roll for damage, and then do your yes. dexterity check to retrieve. Kill him, Dim. Kill him. Yes. yes. Oh. Right, and then the extra dexterity. I'm so dexterous, guys. Honestly. <laughs> Other than that, twenty. <laughs> I'm, I'm so dexterous. Oh, oh. Okay, so me. you were not able to retrieve it, Dim. You still have the rope, but it's stuck in the rat now. Ah, oh, goddamn! Now you have rat. a rat as well. <laughs> but you have no. Remember, you have two of them, so you're able. You can just drop the cord and grab your other one for later if you want. Yeah, I'll drop. I'll drop the cord on that one. I can retrieve okay. it if I drop the cord, right? After the battle's end, I can retrieve it after the battle's ended. Yeah, right? no, of course, yes, yes. Mm. Okay, just, yeah, yeah. Able to, it got stuck in the rat or kind of wrapped up in the rat, whatever. You know that for whatever reason you were not able to retrieve it. Yep. I'm gonna, I'm gonna blame Eliod's, just in character that <laughs> I couldn't retrieve it because of him. Hey, Daka, you are up, my friend. I'm gonna shoot this rat right in front of me. Oh, pew pew pew, trip it up. I'm gonna attempt to trip it up as well. So let's. Let's see how much damage it right, does. So nice shot. Not too much yet, but what? Why are you obsessed with tripping up rats? Because it's good. Because <laughs> you trip up rats, it, you trip things up. It does more damage, and it puts it prone. So then you get advantage of when it's prone, right? But they never fail GFIs. They never do, do they? The scumbags. Rats never fail GFIs. It's true. Boom. So hit the other formula there for the additional damage. Ugh, Perfect. One more damage. Well worth the trip attack, yeah. Well, it is, it is if it fails the strength test. Strength saving throw. This expert crossbowman <laughs> is uh, a bit suspicious, guys. Okay, so he misses the saving throw. So once again, you, you have expertly utilized your crossbow <laughs> bolt to take off one of his feet and he trips up. And, and similar to the... The uh, the ATAT -AT from, uh, from, <laughs> from, from from Strikes Back. He he wobbles one way, then the other, then he falls over onto his side, and he's knocked prone. Glorious. So now I can shoot him with advantage. Wait, whoever next? Yeah, with advantage. 
Mm. Whoever next comes in this cave is going to think there's something crazy going on with all these rat limbs. <laughs> <laughs> 25 obviously hits. Pew pew. Four, that might kill him. Would you get a nine? Nine, yeah. Dead. Four. Dead, dead, dead. <laughs> dead, dead, dead. Right, another is. rat dead. All right, go ahead and uh, forward your... So, um, Flargo Snarp, what I did on your turn is I actually used Poison Spray because it's a strength check versus a dexterity check. And um, then I used your bonus action to um, disengage and moved you away so that way he wouldn't be able to attack you the next round. Okay. So it's now your turn. Well, I guess we'll Poison Spray the last one, then. Let's go. Uh... Let's go. Hi. <laughs> and then Daka gets the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've got a Daka, right? Daka, <laughs> Daka. <laughs> He's like he's well, not I even in my play. vision. He's like I can just see <laughs> half of his face. <laughs> All right, so roll your damage. I'm too far away. All right, I need to move closer. Okay, so he's failed his dexter. If you can move on the map to that point, that's okay. Even though it looks like you're on the wall, if that's 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 within playable space. The way that I no, had to I put mean, the walls that... in in order All to right. let you guys see the uh, edges. No. The goblins not like amazing climbers anyway. Like if they, <laughs> like you think yeah, they, no they, reason why he would, why he would clamber up the wall in order to yeah. cast a poison. <laughs> well, like I mean, he's seen how his last spells have gone, and he's like, wow, I yeah. might smash myself. <laughs> I'm gonna get out of range. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh baby! Oh, oh. he failed his uh, his roll already. Oh it's, wow! It's like, it's like waiting for yeah, a bus. I, I rolled it before him. I was anticipating him rolling faster. I rolled a seven, so it, it makes full damage. Ooh, Twelve damages. So once again, all this oh, this God. poison, this this little this little rat just takes. He's in the, <laughs> he's in there like he's 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 huffing cocaine, right? This little guy, the poison comes out. <laughs> <laughs> this little rat <laughs> just hit him like crazy, and all of that green mist right up into his little nostrils. <laughs> he's looking at you like, "Whoa, that was the wrong decision." <laughs> oh my god, look at Jimmy! Is that is he dead? Is he dead? No, he's not dead. Dude. No, me Oh my going? god! All right, forward. Uh, go ahead and end your turn there. Oh. If that's all you want to do. Didn't he just take 12 points of damage? Yeah, I can't yeah. stab him as well. He must have like 13 or 14 now. Eh? Alright, biting at Dimitri off again. <laughs> oh, no Does good. Cause the... No, no, because I've still got the shield, I imagine. Yes. Oh, that's true, that's true. Alright, so he misses. Elliot? Um... I, I guess it's another sacred flame. I'll uh, I'll I'll move up behind Dimmy and uh, now everybody's him. getting bald at him. <laughs> yeah, I know it's amazing. Well, apart from Jimmy, <laughs> yeah, I'm right at the back. Dak <laughs> <laughs> is about as brave as he's been the whole campaign. <laughs> oh, got him. Okay, so your your sacred flame kills the rat. Uh, kind of describe to us how that goes down. Yeah, so the, I'm holding the torch, and the flame jumps from the torch, sears across the room, you know, lighting the sides of the cave, and you know, smashes into the rat. Fire covers, engulfs the rat, and it, it screeks as it as it dies and burns to a crisp. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, you guys have, have have defeated the rattling horde. Glorious. Oh my god, that was brutal. Mm, there was a lot of rats. There's a lot of rats. You're barely in. Nine. What are you talking about, Nine man? Rats. Mm -hmm. So how how long is a short rest, and what does it do? So a short rest is, if I remember correctly, two hours, plus okay. or minus, and then that that will recover. You have, um, I don't really on your level. You get that many hit dice to roll for heals. So in your uh... case, your hit die is a d12. You're level three. You could elect to roll one, two, or three to heal yourself. 
if you take a short rest. In addition, any abilities that recover on a short rest would recover. Okay, how do we know if the abilities recover on a short rest? If you have, if you look at the ability itself, it'll tell you. Uh, it'll tell you I mean, recovers on a short rest, recovers on a long rest, so on and so forth. Uh, I mean, I don't need one. I don't need one, but I um, I just was asking the question because uh, we don't want to be late for dinner, do we, guys? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but, but I just got to, just a question about rests and and, uh, and recharge abilities. My channel divinity that I used as a bonus action still says one out of one. So that should be no out of one, right? Yeah, that it's should just, be. That should. Did, yeah. yeah, you might have. It might have for some reason clicked funky on it. Yeah, it's just I've got like no out of four superiority die. That's yeah, I've got, got one out of four, and also the action surge right for us. Yeah, action so, surge is down. Yeah. I've still got let's, a fair let's amount. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, Daedal's off already. Should we? Should we? Daedal's already off. Yeah. Can we search these these rats? <laughs> Daedal's have... off and running. Yeah, let's get these, like cut a tail let's... off, right? I'm gonna yeah. follow Daedal intently. The feet, get the feet. Let's yeah, well, let's get okay, like so really let's really quick before we move forward rat here. Parts. Don't move any forward there, Daedal. So really quick, what are you doing? Just give me a quick synopsis on what you're finishing up combat here with. We're just gonna get. I want to get like, my Hancock back. Okay. I'm I'm retrieving my Hancock, so I've got two Hancocks. Um, okay. Are we gonna eat these rats or what? <laughs> no, no, just evidence, right? We need evidence so we'll get like you know some various. Well, they're giant rats, aren't they? So, yeah. So can we? Oh no, it's like the size of a bulldog, though, isn't it? Yeah. So you can't yeah. really carry that in our backpack. No, yeah, we they're, can. They're pretty big rats, dude. We've got pretty big backpacks. To be well, fair. can we take like one of their arms and put it in? Oh, yeah, yeah, easily. Yeah, you can. Yeah. yeah, that's 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 relatively. Yeah. Uh, the, the the two humans one, one that of, Jimmy one of shot off. You could easily put that in your backpack. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like Jimmy a, shot off the arm, didn't he? A so claw, like, a tail, the leg. A, a bit of fur, you know, all sorts of things. <laughs> they have arms. Rats have arms. Oh, legs. Well, they have four <laughs> legs, but yeah, we get the gist. Like Skaven I mean, have arms. Skaven I've have seen, arms. Rats have legs. I, I've seen. I've seen rats do chin. What about squirrels? <laughs> Just saying. Just quietly. <laughs> I've seen rats do chin ups, man. <laughs> you can't do chin ups with legs, can you? I've seen rats do do bench press on chun the street. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mouse, Jim. But yes, we get the gist. <laughs> wow. Split okay, so you're collecting, and... you're collecting um, uh, the one of the arms from the giant rats. Okay, yeah. and then are we saying no to a short rest or? No, I wanna, okay. So I'm going to say the same we thing I told Dadel earlier. You're in a cave with a yeah. torch. Yeah. And you're contemplating sitting down in a corner for two hours. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's carry on, let's crack on. Just, I just want to throw, you can do it, because there are situations where that may be necessary in the future. Hmm. I'm just saying to, you know, keep that in mind. Yeah, we've got to get back for dinner. I mean, we could just go back for dinner and then come down here later, couldn't we? Dadel's already starting to move off here. Dadel's kind of leading the party here, so. Your obsession with food is insane. <laughs> I mean, we can't be late for dinner, dinner, you know, I, Do you want to take a right or a left, or do you want to uh, head up where where the rats were? Always like left. They're right. They're, all right, good. Well, I mean, Flaggle, you've got the best eyesight, so, you know, it's, I guess it's up to you to lead us a bit. All right, stay there, Flargle, real quick. Further downstairs. Stay there real quick, Flargle. Yeah. So here the cavern starts um, descending. Yeah, they're not they're not specific steps. Obviously, I mean, I, I know what you're saying, but it starts moving downhill. Um, like how Dimitri, I was like, nope. <laughs> uh, I don't like the sound of that downhill. <laughs> <laughs> and there goes Daka. <laughs> no, no, no. Just, just remember, guys, if if you were to encounter right now, Flargle is in the lead. If something happens, you can declare yourself within 15 feet of him in any direction. We're going yeah. back to that. Yeah. So you start to smell. Um, there's a tingy, like a tinny smell. Ooh. Almost like a soft. If you had to describe it, it's, it's hard to describe. It's sickly sweet. So it, it's like it, it turns your nostrils a little bit after the initial sweet smell. It's very hard to describe this, right? Um, metallic might come to mind. It doesn't, isn't blood metallic? It doesn't metallic. So oh, metallic God. might come to mind. Um, uh, not necessarily Adios. iron, but I, not a silver. But like, you, you know what I mean? It's like one of the common metals, we'll just say. 
is starting to permeate your nostrils a little bit here. Uh, like, do you, do you guys want to do any checks or anything, or are we just going to smash through? I check with my eyes. I mean, can I, I have some... Like, <laughs> those... Yeah, can I have some kind of perception check? I mean, I don't know what because I'm an no, idiot. No, that's fine. But, yeah, but so, okay, so quit. Stop moving there, Flargo. Because remember, every time you move, I'm, I'm gonna, something's going to happen here. <laughs> um, so, uh, Doc, if you want to take a perception check, feel free to. Yeah. Like, tell like, me what you're trying to perceive here. I mean, just what? Like, I don't, I don't know. The smell. I, Do you know the smell? Yeah, because like I'm yeah, just that's different. That's a, that's a, so a perception check of can I hear anything? Can I, you know, is different than. What is that smell? That's what I'm looking for. Right. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I, I want to see if I've got any idea of what's going on, but I mean, I don't know because I'm a, I am a person in modern day England who has no experience of this, but Daka is like, you know. Daka is, so imagine yourself as, as, <laughs> as a, a, a younger version of, we'll just say, uh, I wanted to say Inspector Clouseau, but that's probably <laughs> cool. We'll say, we'll, we'll say, um, uh, uh, oh God! What's his name? Do you know who Columbo is? Do you remember that guy? <laughs> oh yeah, Columbo. Yeah, yeah. Right, so you've like... got some experience in, in in crime scene investigation, we'll say. Yeah, exactly. Now you're not. You don't. You don't use your computer to check Google for you know what the latest. But right, you've got so some he, real world experience at this. Yeah, this guy does. I don't. So I don't know what I'm thinking. Oh, by the way, I should have got some crossbow balls back. I'll I'll, I'll change that on my thing. Um. So yeah, I'll, I'll 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 just see what I can see or what I know or whatever. So, okay, so 21's a good role, but what are you trying to find out? Like, just a any information of, like, what this okay, could so all be. I'll fill in the blank for you so you kind of, um, know what to, kind of know what to ask next time. So, Thank you. That smell is very familiar to you. Right. Very familiar to you. Um, it is the smell of blood and or blood mixed with other items. Mm. When you've walked in on the murder scenes here or there, um, that smell has ingrained itself in your brain from some of the, the viciousness that you've seen. Oof. Right? Um, more so to you, the reason Dmitriov doesn't really sense this is Dmitriov has never been in a confined space with the same smell. He definitely has, in, has encountered blood, um, but not like you've been inside of a home, you've been inside of cave systems, you've been inside of warehouses, you've been, you know, where you found a body in a trunk. Right. Things like that. There's there's definite there's definite smells of blood in the air. Radio. How fresh Hello. is the body? <laughs> yeah, how fresh? How fresh is the blood? How fresh is no, the blood? That's a very valid question, especially with that roll. It's in the air. This oh, is God. not. This is you don't smell. You don't smell decomposition. That doesn't mean it isn't there. Right now, it's just overpowered by blood. Oh god. That's not ominous at all. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Jesus Christ. Um by the way, while we were walking up I reloaded my crossbow. While we were while we were walking up I reloaded my crossbow. I've sorted that's, out. That's that's just things. assumed, uh, Jim. Yep, I'm, right, I'm, I'm 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 not going to tell you, "Oh, you didn't tell me that, so it didn't happen." Good. You good. are a crossbow phenom. Your crossbow's <laughs> loaded. Well, we're not going to turn back at this point, right? I vote we proceed. Okay, really quick check of the of the real world clock. What time do you guys have to be there for PC? I don't know. I think he's starting at nine, so we've got to be there a bit earlier, right? Yes, yes. So we'll do another, say, plus or minus 20 to 30? Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, ha ha half okay. eight probably. Is if we get to a point where I think we have a good stopping point as well, then I'll just stop us at that point as well. Sure. Yep. Okay, so Flargo Snarp has taken the lead here, so feel free to move your full movement. I don't know what that is. If you open your character sheet, it'll tell you. It'll, I believe you're 30 feet. I think it might be 25 for him. Yeah, so, 25. Um, Elliot's 25. Gnomes are oh, considerably I'm faster 30. than gnomes. They're little scurriers. What? <laughs> yep, I'm 30. No! <laughs> Diced! All right, what's the uh, one square is how many feet? Five. Five. Six squares. Right, so Six squares, Dale. Quick math. Three. All right, so I have three more. One, two, three. Oh, by the way, with with the smell of the... He just did four. He just did yeah, four. Yeah. He did it. Oh my with, God. The, with the smell of uh, blood in the air, um, Elliot the Nom, would you like to bless us again with your powerful oh. magics, please? Good idea, good idea. Uh, Thank you. Don't bless, bless Jimmy. 
<laughs> don't, uh, don't go. Unless, uh, unless he moves up. Yeah, there we go. Do level one unless again. he moves up. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I sp sprinkle the water, give you a good, good little splash. You're a little bit tired now of coming, get wet every time, but it's, uh, yeah. it's probably, probably worth it. Have you got a towel with you, little gnome? <laughs> as, as Elliot sprays you with his water of life, it feels it feels refreshing across all of your faces. I bask in the glory of being sprayed by Elliot. The money shot from Elliot. <laughs> One, two. Okay, uh, feel free. Okay, so for this point here, so I'm explaining this to. When uh, do you want to stop? Or do you want to keep moving? It's up to you. I I am uh, I keep moving until I see something of interest. But okay. no, this this is I'm looking at what you can see is something of interest right in front of you. Or do you want to keep moving? I mean, yeah, that's interesting, but it's not interesting until I'm closer. Okay. And the others can move forward with you. Ooh. Nostalgia. Ooh. 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 All I can see is a wooden plank. Mm. That's a structure. <laughs> Is that's, why I, that's why I said I don't want to stop, like, 30 feet from it. Okay, stop at the edge. This side of the bridge, please. Right there. Okay, Push so the there is this this little cat, or this, I don't want to even call it a canyon. It's literally just a dip in the ground. Is maybe four feet, three feet deep. It's not that bad. Right, it's about as tall as Elliot and, uh, as Elliot and Florigal Snarp, but the other two could easily hop down and hop right up over it. That's so the there's trench. a reason that this bridge is here in your minds. It pops in your head immediately. They're going across this with something, right? There's wagon um, tracks that are kind of ground into it a little bit, like a trail, if you will, um, from usage. Hmm. But, but it can't be anything big, or like because they couldn't get big things down the trapdoor, right? Or it could so... be another entrance, though. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and there's the other fork in the road. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Flargo Snarp, if you'd like, unless you guys want to com communicate some more, you can move forward if you'd like. All right, well, Jimmy, do you want to, like, duck into the trench and use it as a shooting post? Potentially. No, yeah, potentially, yeah, yeah. It's a foxhole! Yeah, I'll get in the foxhole! <laughs> yes, let's go! <laughs> Jimmy snaps in the gear. <laughs> let's go! Let's get in the foxhole. Okay. Right. Um, it seems like I, the the road ends to our right, so we're just gonna go left, as Elliot said. Mm. Always left. Oh, well, you can see the end. Is that is that actually closed off? Is it on the up, right? Up top yeah. is is the end of passage. Yeah. Up, up top. Up top. Up top. Up top. Up top. There's, there's no chests or anything. Okay, go ahead and stop right there, Florgo Snarp. You moved another uh, thirty there. So right. the smell is getting a little bit stronger to you, Jim. Daka. Mm, the smell yeah, is getting I'm... stronger, lads. Should I move away? Blood. What you're talking about? I smell blood. <laughs> okay, help, so help. now that uh, Dmitriev, now that Daka has said something, this now gets a little more familiar for you, because you've smelled blood on the battlefield, right? But it's always been out in the open with breezes, with other smells mixed in. It's a softer smell. This is much more poignant. But the minute he says blood, man, it reacts in your head instantly that this is blood on the air. I smell it too. <laughs> blood. Blood. Lots. Lots of blood. Okay, Florgo Snarp, so 30 feet at a time, brother, because I want to see if there's any reaction to anything, if there's anything ahead. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Okay, boys, yeah. bring up the rear there. That way your uh, your sight comes in. Anything? Um, there's... What, is, th is that like a, a hole that can lead somewhere can i like tell that if, from, if you, you can't so that? it's you see the edge there i can't see it what can you see to, to our right okay, so now, no, in, in your line of vision you can see that that is just that's a little i don't want to call it a cubby it's just like a little pocket all right so it's not it's not a tunnel all right jimmy um daka give me a perception check please yes boss uh, Dimitriev, give me a perception check, please. Me? Yes. Because you've been uh, in battle before. You're a seasoned warrior. Um... Oh, oh, not bad. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. No, that's right. <laughs> okay. So, Daka, you hear <laughs> when, when everybody's feet are... When, 
everybody's feet are kind of moving it's shuffling right you guys are taking your time you're not clamoring down this this tunnel like idiots right banging on your your shields yeah. um oh, you God, hear some that. soft <laughs> <laughs> right you hear some soft chanting on 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 the air no. you can't make out what it is Ooh. it would it would be a a, a murmur maybe but it's got a rhythm to it, like a something oh, like that. You can't make out the exact, the sound as far as like listening to what, what does this sound like, but it's it's on the air as well with the smell now. Okay, so obviously right, I'll say, well, wait up, wait up, wait up, Flago. I can like hear some kind of like chanting. Uh, this seems like some kind of, maybe it's like sacrifice, right? With if there's blood and there's chanting. All right. This could be something. Should, should I should I grant one of us invisibility, me or Elliot, to uh, to sneak uh, closer if like you can hear that now? Um, well, we can't do Elliot. Like... He's got the torch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he could pass the torch to one of us, and we oh, stay back. Like true, either me true. or Elliot. <laughs> either me or Elliot, since we can see without the torch, should probably like sneak closer. Um, but like the, this way, we could. I can't grant all of us invisibility, and granting you invisibility without the torch seems pointless. Oh, <laughs> what, what's invisibility? Is that dex? Would that be like stealth? Would be dex, wouldn't it? No, there is actually a um, an ability itself. Yeah, but if it's like if there was stealth as well, or does it just not matter then if he, if you're just invisible? Could be either, then, couldn't it? So whichever. No, if he's invisible, he would be governed by the spell itself. Right. Yeah, well, the spell, the spell but you're faster, aren't you, Flago? You're, you're faster than me. Yeah, yeah, good idea. Yeah, all right. So yeah, you're faster. Cheers. So yeah, I cast invisibility on myself then. Okay, go ahead and cast the spell. Left click on it, so it uses up a spell slot. Oof. All right, give me one second. I just want to make sure we're is carrying invisible. Da, 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 da. The spell ends if the target attacks or casts a spell. Okay, so. What you see, then, you will not be able to communicate back unless you decide to verbally do it, which at, at that point will... Whatever's yeah, going I mean, on I'll, ahead. I'll need, to, I'll need to head back once I... Yep, exactly. Once I discover anything. Now, if you want to, um, do you see on the top left-hand side of your of your screen there where you've got the little ruler? It's third on, down from the right. Uh, if you click the ruler and then, and then left-click on your character and just move the line forward, it'll tell you how far you... So that way you know what box to move to. All right. As opposed to trying to count out the squares. And Wait. as long as you get close, I'm fine with it. Just don't take advantage of it. Okay, so you're starting to round this corner, and in front of you on the ground, you see copious amounts of blood. I mean, it's just covering the ground. You see, you see two robed red figures. They're I both see three. Face... Say again. I see three. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see that one because I'm looking at your view. Yep, you see three robed red figures. They're all facing away from you, as if they're paying attention to something. Yeah, the house, being... the, the, the horse or unicorn on the crown. All you see is the ass end of what might be. It's a, it's an equine of some kind. <laughs> yeah. All you see oh, is the ass end of what is... Could be a centaur paper. as well. Say again? Could be a centaur as well. Could be a centaur, yep. Well, that's half equine. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't know. I can't see the front of it. Hold on. What I'm saying is rarely is a half of a centaur. Uh, is it a horse or not? <laughs> Can someone tell me what an equine is? <laughs> horse. It's, it's horse-like horse. creature. Uh. Or horse creatures. Okay. Okay, so can this I thought here... it was whores. I thought you were talking about whores. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, There's whores on the ground, like on bloody on hell, this is a bit much. <laughs> a bit much. That's a large pile of fresh dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Scattered. <laughs> Scattered <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> Like, a unicorn might be a centaur, but it's a bunch of whores. <laughs> <laughs> so you, this this pile of this is a, a large pile of fresh dirt. Yeah, that looks as if it's fallen in from the ceiling. All right, I think it's mm -hmm. Can I can I look up at the ceiling and see if I see anything? 
Yeah, it's just all it looks like is just dirt has fallen from the ceiling and kind of made a pile there. It's a okay. big pile, but it's a pile. Yeah. What would you like to do? Well, I'd like to move closer. Okay, so give me a um, give me a stealth check with advantage because you're a goblin and you're invisible. You are not... Um, uh, you still make noise as you move even though you are invisible. Where's the... Oh, yeah. Left-hand side of your character sheet, and then when you left-click it, you should be able to see, you should see advantage after you. Where's, where's Daka going? <laughs> I was just looking at the thing. I'm com we're completely night blind here, Demi. This is crazy. It's like pitch black. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I was just checking to see if, like, you know, what my what, what my sight range was, and it's just literally. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're you're okay. So, um, you're still. Yeah, so they make no. They are. They're if they if they know you're there, they they aren't letting you know that. They they paid no attention to where you are. In front of you, you see what you see, right? You've got seven figures all in red, red robes. Um, you've got one central figure in the back who would appear to be some type of a, he's leading some type of a, a whether it's a religious thing, whether it's a cult thing, whether it's a, it, you just, it, it has uh, religious connotations to it. It's not a spell. He's not casting a spell. He's, he's, he's got something else going on here, right? And he's the one who's chanting in that low murmur with a nice low thrum. And the, the, the two guys that are flanking him are voraciously cutting open pieces of meat while they're letting the blood go onto the ground and they're just tossing the meat out onto the floor in front. Mm. And you see, you see the... the remains of humans here. You see, you see people cut in half. It is a grisly grisly scene in front of you and all five of, i'm sorry all seven of these individuals are covered in blood with at some point whether it's across their gauntlets and hands whether it's across their boots nothing over faces nothing like it's a uh, nothing like it's um uh, there's a religious ceremony here this isn't you know we're they're not eating it they're not drinking it they're not doing anything like that they're they're prepping for something or they're finishing up from something Mm. Uh, Flaggle stops uh, taking to honesty, guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so if this Hope is okay. Oh, I wonder what he's so, spotted. Okay, so it's a, I've got let's, a feeling he's spotted that. some grizzly. <laughs> grizzly Daka, you still. So the chanting, <laughs> the chanting hasn't like changed cadence, hasn't stopped. There's nothing has changed since Flargle Snarp has has magically disappeared in front of your eyes and moved off to wherever he's moved off. I it's hope. been about 60 to maybe 75 seconds. He hasn't been gone long. Yeah. I wonder if he's just gone and sneaked off to have dinner without us. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you, you guys would like to do back there? Just gotta I mean, we out, should ready out, like, creep ready up, do some um, uh, rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, I think we we gotta wait, right? We gotta wait. Like the, the whole idea right, is Florida, sir, it's back right. to you then. scouting with yeah, invisibility. I'll, I'll uh, make my way back. Okay, give me one. Uh, give me one. One. One more check with advantage. Once you get around this corner, I, I will consider you out of earshot from them. They're not looking for you. I right, closed down. Sorry. Um... You're okay. All right, you're Holy still hidden. Just, as you can Holy tell, God. nothing has changed. Oof. Crapper. <laughs> all right, so yeah, the next movement is out. Of, um... Feel free to move all the way back. Well, hey. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I end my invisibility and pop out uh, to the others. <clears throat> um, actually, no, I don't. Ooh. Mm. Uh, I just start whispering to them. Um, <laughs> hey guys, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and then I poke uh, Dimmy in the side. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so and then obviously it's tell us art. what you've seen yeah uh so like there's uh there's like a cult doing some nasty shit down there uh they've cut open a horse like it's pools of blood like they're basically waiting around in in the blood chanting like some mysterious thing and like they're cutting and carving open like this horse and like humans and whatever and one of them looked like the leader um uh they are up to no fucking good and yeah the soil that we were seeing like that that there was a pile of it in the middle of like this blood pile mm. um but i don't know what they're up to uh but this like seems connected to whatever's happened here and to the manor in itself like uh there's obviously shit afoot here mm -hmm. um what we could do like i i could cast something that uh could maybe um mm -hmm. make them fall asleep um so we could deal with them easier easier um but yeah i'd like to take them out and like trap one of them alive and question him uh, cool. about i'm always up for a bit of interrogation yeah <laughs> good bit of torture maybe, cool. maybe a bit Why? of torture as well what? i was gonna suggest it but i'm glad you did definitely well, a bit of torture why don't you just tell him one of your stories? Hey! <laughs> uh, well, it's it's twenty five past eight. This is this seems a good mm. a good point to end it for now, doesn't it? Because uh, yeah. then we can think well, about. Let's, what let's we're so do. okay. So this was where I was going to end it real quick. But is there any other reactions or anything anybody wants to do before like, you decide? I realize this looks bad. Are, are we sure they're humans? Like they're cutting up, you know? Like they're they're definitely you know. It's definitely they human were bodies. Humanoid <laughs> creatures. I, could, I couldn't tell from my from my vantage point. I couldn't tell like whether they were humans, but they were definitely humanoid creatures. Mm, and okay. I, I and like it's like there was this mud pile, and I wasn't I wasn't able to stay for very long, or there was no need for me to stay for very long. Like it was clear that they were they were busy doing this, and um, like it was hidden from. I'm not tall enough to see past the horse and uh, and the mud pile to make out exactly uh, the kinds it, of creatures they were cutting up. If, if it was just horses, then you know, let 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 them be. But I, yeah, I guess if it's humanoids, then uh, <laughs> should probably do something about it. Live and let live, Elliot. Wow, yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's, not, it's none of our business. We've been taxed with we've yeah. been tasked with investigating things, taking samples, and going back. We're not here to go and. That's that's a, that's another valid point. Mm -hmm. They're not necessarily bad guys, you know. Just, you know, they cut your horse. Yeah. 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 I mean, like, <laughs> that is true. That is true. We are definitely bad guys. <laughs> Some kind what? of blood magic or something is this? Does that mm. exist? Uh, I I blood don't magic. know if it's blood magic. Uh, so, they, they they seem like just busy. In this in this case, right? Elliot would be a much better person to have taken this role, but he didn't see it. Oh, so I'll let you do a religion check with disadvantage if you'd oh. like to, to kind of try to tell what's going on. Of course, yeah. Okay, mm. yeah, so... Uh... Not, not Elliot, uh, Flargo Snark. Oh, sorry, sorry. Because oh. he's trying to interpret it from his point of view. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Mm. Uh... Some disadvantage. Oh, oh not bad. <laughs> no, no, so, no, so he walked in, he, no, let's, let's, he walked in at the at, at the right time, and was able, he was it was quite obvious to him that they are preparing a ceremony of some kind to a higher power that is within we'll say within they were trying to to summon something, right? Okay. They were trying to appease something. There's a difference, right? Mm. So 
something that they are behest to is what they were chanting for, preparing for, something along those lines. It didn't, there wasn't a location where you would typically have like a pedestal where you would, if you were summoning a, a, a god or an ifrit or something would have, a, there wasn't all of that pomp and circumstance, right? This was more about a, a, an appeasement of some kind. Not sure, were they feeding something? Were they, we don't, you don't know that. But this was very much like they were they were chopping up that meat. They were spreading the blood. They're spreading the meat piles around. It, it wasn't like you know a, a a concerted specific event, if that makes sense. So maybe we don't go in all guns blazing, and we. Uh, yeah. Them. What what if we stop them from appeasing this thing? What happens then? Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's a very good point. Okay. We'll be on a piece. Seeing is trying and, and to the reason, turn the reason animals that I to keep... into larger animals that I want to. <laughs> the reason that us. I wanted to keep going with that is because that wouldn't have had the same poignance had we started next week's episode with that. Sure. Um, yeah. But I want you guys. So as 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 you know, the the scene of our intrepid heroes kind of, you know, kind of fades slightly to black as they're kind mm -hmm. of looking at each other once Flargol Snarp is is explaining this to them. Right, everything kind of fades out. And then like a like a like a movie or a, your favorite TV show with its with its cliffhanger, right? Mm. Everything goes dark, and then oh, in hey. another area somewhere, things kind of come back into focus. And this is totally out of character, but I love to do shit like this. So things come back into focus, and we see these another. It's not the same um, uh, cultists. If if they are cultists, it's not the same red figure. But we see in another cave somewhere. We don't know where we see two men holding up a humanoid figure by his legs off of the ground as another one comes with this giant axe just cutting him in two. Whoa. Essentially from the bottom up as they're holding him open. And they tear his body apart and all of his, his innards, his organs, his blood pours out onto the floor. And they drop both sets of the uh, both halves of this body onto the ground. And looking up, if there was a camera that kind of zoomed in slightly and slightly out of focus, right? Like one of these found footage things. <laughs> we see the face of Finches before you, as the as in the look of just death in his eyes. <gasps> and then the whole thing turns black. I thought he was okay. Oh. So, but we, we don't know this. We we don't have this information, right? Oh, do, no, do this we... is this is this is something. This is the cliffhanger, boys. Whoa. But but like our, our characters. No, aren't... your characters do not know this. This was yeah, out of character. Yeah. This was yeah, your. Sure. This was the this was the TV episode ending. Nice, Whoa. nice. <laughs> Pretty cool. Very exciting. Um, well, there you go. Thank you very much, Jack Bull. Thank you very much, Elliot, Dimmy, and Daedal. Been... Thank you. Absolutely glorious. Now we're we're headed off to uh to uh, I don't know, I don't know, BB. Yeah, yeah all wob all wob will be starting soon. But um, yeah, that that's it for that's it for five idiots. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic. Bye now.